for the masses. Headline of this news, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. To Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening, Fade to Black. Yeah, man. Monday. We're back. What a weekend. What a weekend. Today is Monday, February 12, 2018. 43 days into the new year, just 322 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in downtown Burbank, California. And I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black. For KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet, I am your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking? How you doing? All right. Lost my pipes. <laughs> Three days in a row, too. You know, so it's coming back. It's coming back. But what a great weekend. And you only lose your your voice. You know, if you're out there yelling and screaming and doing that thing like uh, we just did for the last three days. And uh, it was, it's pretty funny because when I wake up in the morning and uh, after, you know, these these days that we just cranked together out at uh, Conscious Life, I turn to Rita and I go, good morning. That's it. I got no pipes. And she's like, oh, I don't have to hear Jimmy. At least for the next hour. And then, you know, it eventually, you know, comes back. Lozenges and and coffee. Coffee. That takes care of it. So there you go. We're back. An amazing weekend that we just spent out uh, at the Conscious Life Expo down at LAX. More about that in just a bit. I did post a few pictures over on my Facebook page uh, today. And I know that you guys wanted to see something. So... I posted a few. We've got a ton. And uh, Brad Harris, too, has got a bunch of amazing pics. He was uh, he was our official staff photographer uh, for the weekend. And so I had him in tow. He's got some amazing stuff. So we'll have all of that uh, together for our show on Wednesday night. Okay, so we've got things shifted around just a bit for this week. And so let me lay down the schedule tonight. Travis Walton is here. Okay, so that's tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, we're going to do a special tribute to John Anthony West. That'll be tomorrow night. Dr. Robert Schock is going to be here with us. And also Chance Gardner, uh, live from Australia. So uh, two of the gentlemen that worked so closely with John uh, over uh, the past, geez, man, Let's, you know, 20 years, uh, 30 years for, for shock. And uh, so that'll be tomorrow night. And so we put this together for you guys. We did a tribute uh, for John Anthony West and Jim Mars at uh, Conscious Life Expo. And if you were there and caught it, um, I think that, you know, and I posted a picture, uh, by the way, of uh, what we did. And if you were there, um, uh Okay, I'm just going to uh, just allow me this moment. If you were there, what we did is we got uh, a Jim Mars fedora and we got a, a pith hat, you know, John Anthony West, pith helmet, pith hat. And we hung those on 
uh, two empty seats, two microphones. And, and you know, hearing everybody speak about John Anthony West uh, um, on the panel, that was one thing. But the audience that was there, and it was... Uh, it was it was it was packed, and that was so cool that that many people um, could be there and 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 capture. Because I I think the photograph that I posted on Facebook captures that moment, and I hope that it did because I was uh, you know it was rough. It was rough for all of us to go through that just to think. Um, the first chair there um, that was next to me. On stage, uh, I just remember a couple of uh, Conscious Life Expos. I remember one specifically. That's where Jim Mars sat. And to turn around and do that, uh, it was just an, an emotional moment. And I think everybody there uh, was able to just, you know, just have a little moment and think about those two. Now, but this was the thing. And I'm going to get to the Dr. Pepper story here uh, in a minute. But I uh, put a couple of uh, water, you know, bottles of water out in front of the microphones, too. You know, they had their water. They had their empty chairs. They had their the microphones, their hats. And I thought, how cool would it be if one of those bottles of water just fell over, <laughs> just got knocked over? And uh, they were there. They were there. It was a really cool moment. So, um, anyway, that will be tomorrow night. Wednesday night is going to be Fader Night. Now, let me explain. I know we did this last week. But uh, thank you, Mark, uh, for posting that. Let me get this up. You can see here, that's, uh, uh, there There it is. So we did, uh, there it is. You know, there's Linda. You can, uh, William Henry's next to, to Linda. And there's David Wilcock and Corey Good. And, and, and there's Jaws and, and Mars. Sitting down at the end, it was it was pretty cool. It's a pretty cool moment. Okay, thank you for posting that, Mark. I just retweeted that out for everybody. Um, and oh, Michelle, thank you for posting this. Okay, I'll retweet that really quick, and I'll explain what this picture is. That's uh, that's man right there. That's when I hung uh, Jim Mars's hat. I hadn't done Jaws yet. And I had a lump in my throat. I almost didn't get through that. I had to just cut it short. I had a whole thing planned, and it didn't happen because uh, I got all uh, got all tight in the throat and couldn't get it out. But there it is. Thank you for posting that, Michelle. That's really cool. And, okay, now, where am I? So, uh, Fader Night, we're going to do a recap of Conscious Life Expo like we do every year. So that'll be on Wednesday. There's a reason why we had to move that up. And so we'll have all the fo- photos and images and friends, and we'll take phone calls, and we'll do, we'll do all of that. Because Thursday, we have Richard Dolan here. And Richard wanted to fully analyze and break down the Richard Doty phone call. He wanted to break it down. So that's what we're going to do on Thursday night. Dolan's going to be here, and we're going to discuss all the points in that phone call, which I have listened to now. I uh, went back, and I listened to the entire thing, and, and I started catching things that I didn't remember. So that's what we're going to do on Thursday night and some other things. I'm sure that DeLong is going to be brought up and what's going on there. Okay? All right. So that's our week here on Faded Black. It's going to be great. So just hang out with us. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. Simple, at J Church Radio. And hashtag F2B is the sandbox, so you can come and join in on all of the conversations. We use TweetDeck. Get yourself TweetDeck. Come and hang out. Any questions or comments for myself or Travis tonight, use hashtag F2BQ. Okay? Sheila Williams just tweeted out. Is there going to be a show tonight? Yes. Yes, Sheila, there is going to be a show tonight. Travis Walton is our guest. Any uh, questions or comments, you can do that through email, too, as well. Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Okay, so the big news, and you have to excuse me, my throat is is a little shot out. And the only thing that will fix that is River Moon Coffee. There you go. 
Uh, big shout out to Juanita and Jeff. Uh, uh, we had breakfast with them this morning before they hit the road. And I'm sure that they are listening to us right now. And uh, River Moon Coffee, what uh, what a great weekend with those two. So drive safe, guys, and keep us posted. Send us, tweet out some pictures from the road. Um, I want to remind everybody, though, that uh, don't forget to sign up for our Soul Tech Gathering. It's going to be up at East Eddy Ranch this August 9th through the 12th. And this is the deal. We did 50... Uh, special tickets discounted for the first 50 people to sign up. And I'm not joking here. This is it. 47 uh, in the last few days. So that's it. 47. There's only, I think, and uh, don't hold me to this, but right now there's three left. That's it. Maybe two. I didn't get a chance to check right before showtime. So we were at 47. And so there you go. We're only selling 300 tickets. We're not selling 301. We are, that's it, 300 attendees for the Soul Tech Gathering. Now, all you have to do is go to soultechgathering.com. Soultechgathering.com. We have the links up, and uh, you can just go. And it's right there on Twitter. It's over on jimmychurchradio.com. Go and get your tickets. It's going to sell out. Like I said, we're not going to do... 301 or 305 tickets. That's it. It's only 300. We want this to be small, intimate, fun, and I want everybody to learn something. Uh, I want you to get there and and make friends and, and have these memories that will last a lifetime. Because look, what I left, when what Rita and I left with from ESETI, I'll never forget. Ever, and we want you to do the same thing. And if you've been to East Eddy before, then you are going to go to Soul Tech because you know exactly what we're talking about. But uh, there you go. It's August 9th through the 12th, okay, uh, 2018. SoulTechGathering.com. And all right, so where am I at? Our next event, now that Conscious Life Expo is behind us, our next event. Contact in the desert. The uh, the as far as uh, UFO conferences go, hidden knowledge, all of that stuff, conspiracy. The biggest event of the year, and it's going to be in Indian Wells, Palm Springs, at the Re- Renaissance Resort and Spa. So excited about this! Uh, we only do uh, a few events every year, and Conscious Life Expo, Contact in the Desert. We may, uh, you know, we may do a couple of other things this year. Just it just depends on scheduling and and stuff. So, but these are the two events, and it's coming up June first through the fourth, two thousand eighteen. And the links are all over the place. They're at JimmyChurchRadio dot com. They're here in Twitter, and you can go to contactinthedesert dot com. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. We have over eight. 100 archive shows, custom apps, Apple, Android, all platforms, just $2 a month. Click on the podcast banner over at uh, jimmychurchradio.com. You can also become a fade or not. Now, just go to our membership section on the site and pick your flavor. Go and do it. You can go everywhere from becoming a fade or not to the full-on game changer and and go and sign up right now. You can get commercial-free downloadable archives autograph shirts and hats and all kinds of things email to me and and all of that stuff so you can go do it right now over in the membership section at jimmychurchradio.com now all uh, life change tea river moon coffee new farmer they were all at the conscious life expo it was really great to see um all of the fader knots at those booths and hanging out and having people come up literally Go, dude, you're Ronnie McMullen from Life Change Tea. So cool. He's a tall guy, too. I had no idea. Chip Paul was there. New Pharma. Um, great, great uh, time that we had with everybody. Did, did you guys see the, uh, the periscopes that we had done over the weekend? And <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. That I've never done that before. So, uh, And I was sober. I, You know, 
I um, I went back and I, I watched a piece of the uh, Periscope, and I I was tired because I had just worked right for eight, nine, ten hours. I was tired, but I was sober, and I was thinking my, to myself, I'm walking through the bar, I'm acting like a clown, and I'm wondering if everybody just thinks I'm I'm plowed right now. I was I was stone cold sober when that was shot. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, what a great time. What a great time. Okay. Let's get this show cracking. Happy birthday to today. Josh Brolin is fifty. I can't believe it. No country for old men. Great movie. But he was really good at Men in Black Three. Happy birthday, Josh Brolin. And our dead guy's birthday today, I have to do this. Charles Darwin. 1809-1882, died at the age of 73. Yes, I said it out loud. His book, The Origin of Species, first introduced that concept of natural selection. And I would say that today, Darwin <laughs> Darwin has taken a backseat. That's it. All right, I got it off my chest. On this day in history, OTD, 1976. Actor Sal Mineo is stabbed to death in Hollywood, California. They didn't catch the killer for two years. Yeah, that was, a, that, was, that was just insane. Fader fact. In 1719. Now, this is a fader fact. Now, listen to me. In 1719, prisoners in Paris, France were offered freedom, release from prison, if they married a prostitute and moved to Louisiana. Then <laughs> that is a fader fact. Also explains an awful lot. Yeah. Fader fact. Tonight, Travis Walton is here. Tomorrow night, John Anthony West, special tribute with Dr. Robert Schock and Chance Gardner, live from Australia. Wednesday night is going to be Fader Night this week, where we're going to do a Conscious Life Expo uh, recap show. Thursday night, Richard Dolan is here, and Richard is going to talk a little doty. Richard Dolan talking Richard Doty. We're going to break down that surprise phone call uh, that came in. Was that last week or was that two weeks ago? Man. Where does the time go? We're going to do that this Thursday. All right. Now, this is what I want to do. I'm going to say a couple of things really quick, and then I want to tell a funny story about uh, uh, what happened at Conscious Life Expo. First thing, last week I posted this, this thing about Tom DeLong. All right. And I realize uh, the impact that that post has, has made. And I do know uh, about cosmic disclosure and what uh, David Wilcock posted there. Stillness of the Storm and Justin DeChamp. And he posted, uh, which caught my eyes first. And then things have just spun out of control since then. And I didn't, I knew that there was going to be impact. There had to be because this community is, uh, is very smart. But I go to the Conscious Life Expo uh, with Rita, and I'm going to say this, bar none, bar none, every researcher that came up to me, every author, um, it didn't, didn't matter, that came up to me to say, hey, it's good to see you, the next thing that they said was, Tom DeLong. What is going on? And it was, uh, wow, these are great pictures. It was the topic of conversation. And you have to remember that these, these people of our community, these friends that, that are part of us, they are going to police themselves, and this thing is being talked about. It did not go away. I know that uh, uh, Tom would love for it to go away, and those in his organization, and they did the boilerplate uh, release on that, and they just thought that, okay, it, you know, 
Nah, it, it's 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 a nothing burger. Well, no, it's a something burger. And so that was a. T- I mean, I I I. I I was forced into talking about it for for three or four days. And we're going to analyze this and break this down and try to figure out what's going on as uh, the days move ahead. And I know that there are those out there that want me to comment on it now. Um, The bottom line, I said what I said last week on the show. I posted what I posted. And it's just as simple as this. In the interest of transparency, for those that did not know, that that picture was a balloon that they used in their video live feed presentation. It's as simple as that. And that's, that's it. And you can't show a picture of a balloon to this community and tell us that that is a UFO. You can't do it, and that's it. And, and the silence from DeLong is deafening. You need to uh, fully explain yourself and come forward and, and, and put this thing out there. That's, that's it. Okay, so more on that in the future, but that's my comment for today. And, and no, I have not heard back from Tom DeLong. Okay? All right, now let's have some fun. You guys want to have some fun? Lisa Frith, one of our dear friends, uh, And at this point, after this weekend, she's our dearest. Lisa Frith. Um, I'm holding this up to the camera. I did it before the show, but I'm going to do it again. And somebody post the picture of Don Jose. This is is Jose. Okay. She gifted me this this massive, beautiful, uh, perfect, perfect crystal skull. All right. Okay. So we do the uh, you know the little ceremony and we kind of do this thing and and after that she gifted and it was you know it was a really cool moment as she gives me this guy and um, and I can't tell you it's just, just I don't know how big it looks but it's just he's massive he's and he's got a lot of juice going on so Rita and I we go um, uh, back to our room. And we we crawl into bed, and we had some food, right? We're going to eat, and it's about 1 o'clock in the morning. So we're just going to, you know, munch out really quick and talk about the day and then crash and, and get back to work. So we had some buffalo wings and some sliders and some French fries and, you know. And um, uh, I ordered room service, which delivered us um, – some dessert and we had some cake and a couple of bottles of water and a couple of bottles of Dr. Pepper. Well, okay. So over on the, now we're in the middle of this bed, it's king size bed. So three, three feet to my left is the nightstand way over there. I've got Jose, the skull, um, in bed with us and we're looking at him and I take the bottle of Dr. Pepper. I unscrew the top. I take a swig, full bottle of Dr. You know, heavy bottle. And I set it over on the nightstand. And then I turn to read and we continue eating. My back is to the nightstand. And as we are sitting there talking about Jose, this beautiful uh, skull, poof, I was like, what is that? And I turn around and the bottle of Dr. Pepper that was sitting in the middle of the nightstand is gone. And I lean over, I have to lean way over and I look and it's on the floor standing up upright next to the bed and I thought wow that's kind of weird so I pick it up and I put it back on the nightstand I turn to Rita and and you know man these wings are good man these sliders are so good and and you know and this crystal skull so no and I turn around and the bottle of Dr. Pepper has fallen for the second time and I lean over and it's in the exact same spot Landed on its bottom, sit, sit, standing up, and I pick it up, and now I move. I I don't put it at the edge of the. I'm kind of you know, I'm, you know, this is a weird thing, and so I don't set it in the middle of the nightstand. I set it up on top of the lamp where this other bottle of Dr Pepper that was full that I never finished is sitting there. It hasn't fallen over. It's just sitting there. So I put it next to the other bottle of Dr Pepper that I didn't finish. 
And I turned to Rita. I said, man, these wings, man, this, this, man, wow. Oh, these sliders. No. Three times in like three minutes, I turn around and look, and it's on the floor. (laughs) It's on the floor. And I take the skull, I take Jose, and I'm like, I got (laughs) to, you can't sleep with this, man. I dig him out of the bed, and I move him across the room and put him next to uh, the TV set in front of us. And I get the bottle of Dr. Pepper. I, Rita wants to see it. She looks at the bottom. It's all fine. There's, you know, it's not wet or anything. It's, 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 you know. And I take it, and I put it back on the nightstand. And we're tripping out. Now, now this is official you know, poltergeist territory. There's something weird going on. And you have to remember, I turn my back, my back, you know, and it's like three feet behind. It was weird. So anyway, we go to sleep. Woke up in the morning, Dr. Pepper on the floor. (laughs) I was like, oh, man. And there's my Conscious Life Expo hotel room, Crystal Skull, Dr. Pepper story. And it really happened. And I and when I say it really happened, it's it just kind of sounds weird saying it, but it was it was pretty cool. It was it was fun. I I I I enjoyed the moment. We were laughing, you know? And so yeah, yeah. Jose Jose doesn't like Dr. Pepper. Apparently that is the case. Or I was being told not to drink Dr. Pepper. It was it was great. I you know, and so those little things when they happen like that, you have to you know. So what what were the things that were different for us? Nothing. There wasn't any poltergeist activity before Jose entered the hotel room. And I'm I'm going there. I'm going there. So cool. He's all yeah yeah. CITD is a 100% kid friendly. There's a lot of kids there. Absolutely. Bring the kids, and that's from Druber. Bring the kids. Would love to meet everybody. But um, yeah, the uh, the Crystal Skull thing. It's a it's a wonderful experience to go through. And I do want to thank Lisa. And that night, uh, Nancy and and Karen, myself, Rita, and Lisa, we did. Uh, we were uh, taught uh, the 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 skull ceremony and and how to do that. It was very cool. All of that was a lot of fun. And that's when Jose named himself. He didn't have a name, and it happened during that uh, ceremony. W- weird stuff, man. I just, Rita and I have the the best life and the best friends. Just thank you, all of you, for that. All right, uh, tonight, Travis Walton is back. Travis Walton is here, and so we'll be right back with Travis. Tomorrow night, John Anthony West, we're going to do a special tribute with Dr. Robert Schock and Chance Gardner. Wednesday night is going to be our fader night this week, so don't freak out. we got to do it Wednesday. We're going to do a Conscious Life Expo recap with uh, images and fun and stories. And then Thursday night will be Richard Dolan. So it's going to be Richard Dolan breaking down the Richard Doty phone call. That's right. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll be right back with our guest, Travis Walton. Stay with us. Listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. 
when you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fate to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. Natural Health Solutions with Chris and Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie. How you doing? Great, Chris. Now, you're the CEO of GetTheTea.com, right? Yes, I am. What is GetTheTea.com? I mean, is this tea you buy in a store? Well, no, it's not. Life Change Tea is just that. Life Changing. Life Change Tea is an herbal tea that gently cleanses your body from intruders. What do you mean by intruders? Well, intruders are toxins, chemicals, GMOs, heavy metals, and more. They're in our food, in our water, in our air we breathe. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. And Life Change Tea will help you with removing these, as you say, intruders? That's right, Chris. Are there side effects with this tea? Well, you might lose a little weight. When you clean your colon, you lose weight, you feel better, and you have more energy. Wow. Ronnie, where can people purchase Life Change Tea? Oh, that's easy. Get the tea.com. That's get the tea, T-E-A, dot com. Ronnie, I want to thank you for being on the show. People, don't forget, get the tea, T-E-A, dot com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA. The planet. Win big with KGRA this summer. Tickets and hotel accommodations to the biggest conferences, autographed books and DVDs, chances to win all inclusive conference cruises, and private dinners with your favorite KGRA hosts. Click the contest tab at KGRARadio.com for your chance to win big this summer. Your contact for the best alternative talk radio on the planet. KGRARadio.com. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, our guest is Travis Walton. And this segment of Fade to Black is proudly brought to you by Life Change Tea. Just click on the banners over at jimmychurchradio.com. Use the promo code FADER, F-A-D-E-R, and you will get free shipping. It's really that simple. Now, we haven't had Tra- we've had Travis on the show uh, uh, many times over the years, but we haven't had a, a, a full show with Travis, and I can't even believe it. it's been almost four years. We're going to talk about that in just a bit. And yeah, he was just a logger when that abduction happened by a UFO on November fifth, nineteen seventy five, while working with his logging crew in the Apache uh, Sit Greaves National Forest in Arizona. He could not be found, uh, but reappeared after a five-day search. And, of course, the case received mainstream publicity and remains one of the best-known instances of an abduction. UFO historian Jerome Clark writes that few abduction reports have generated this kind of controversy. Well, we're going to go through that tonight a little bit, but I just want to know how Travis is and where he is at today and what he th- and what he thinks about our UFO community and what's going on with disclosure and and we're going to go from front to back with all of that. And I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black our good friend Travis Walton. Travis, it's been 4 years since we've done a full show together. We've done lots of shows with you uh, at different events, but this is the first time 
in four years. I, I, I don't know where the time has gone. Did you know it's been that long? No, it doesn't seem that long, but it's great to be back, Jimmy. I know. Is it, well, see, this is the thing, Travis, is that we we hang out, you, uh, you know, all the remote broadcasts that we do and conferences, so we get to see each other and do interviews, but it's been it's been four years. Wow, wow. You know, yeah. I, I, I won't let it happen again, okay? So there you go. Right. Now, um, Travis, I wanted to start here, and, and as – as you know, but our audience doesn't. You and I have been able to, you know, have lunch and breakfast and hang out and talk and 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 do those things together as friends. And we've had some, you know, some really fun, uh, really cool personal conversations. But one of the things I don't know if this has ever been asked of you directly, because I will do it privately. But now we're on the air, and it's this. Now that you've had this much time to reflect and and go back, I want to ask how it has changed you. How have you changed all the way up to today? You know, how wow. how have you changed? <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know, just, uh, I mean, I've, I've gone through so many changes, you know, over the years and, and been through so much. Uh I set out to not to try to not let it change me too much, you know. Uh, I, I, uh, Dr. Harder had uh, done some uh, hypnosis with Betty Hill, and uh, when he was uh, had me in there for hypnosis, um, he put me on the phone with her, and that was one of the uh, recommendations, you know, that she uh, made uh, is don't don't let them. Uh, change you you know don't let them uh, the way she put it is uh, don't let them uh make you make a parody of yourself right and i i thought long and hard about what what she meant by that and well what did she mean by that well you know you have to um look at the kinds of pressures that somebody in our position uh come under, you know, in, in the course of going public with this and fighting back against uh, skeptics and, you know, um, fellow experiencers and, um, you know, um, I have a, you know, uh, come face to face before very long uh, to face the fact that although there's a huge number of people who have uh, had uh, various experiences there's also some um, um, reports that are, you know, um, less than than real. Right, you know? right, right. And uh, the the debunkers love that. You know, they they always thought that if they could prove any one case to be a meteor or a weather balloon or a planet or anything other than what. Uh, it, w- it was believed to be that they had somehow solved the entire mystery. Uh, but that's, you know, just f- real faulty logic. And uh, I, I, go ahead. Yeah, you know, well, I remember uh, you and I, you had said to me, you, you pulled me aside uh, privately. Uh, we were at an event together, but you said to me, you said to me, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, sometimes I feel, feel that our community there's there's some stuff out there that that isn't right it isn't correct and i can't align myself with those you didn't give me names and i didn't have but but what you were trying to you were like giving me a little a little warning you know i'm the i'm the kid you're you know you're the you're 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 my mentor at that moment and and obviously you have heard things over the years where you've stepped back and you were saying to yourself, that's, that's not the case. And, yeah. and well, you know, failure to prove that it did happen or, you know, to, you know, provide overwhelming evidence to, to come down on that side of it doesn't in any way, you know, disprove it. And, and, uh, uh, that's again, you know, the faulty reasoning that the debunkers use. They they like to um, um, take the unproven as the absolute equivalent of disproven. Right. And you know that's just not the way it works. You know, uh, you go into a court of law and 
uh, failure to convict uh, doesn't hasn't established innocent. It's just failed to establish guilt, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, OJ, right? <laughs> there's yeah, just, there's for a, example. Yeah, for example. And why is that? Um, I have, I, okay, I'm going to, uh, man, I have a long explanation for this question. I'm going to try to avoid that. But I have been asked many times, you know, Jimmy, okay, what's what's the number one, number two, number three cases for you? Uh, and and you always come up, right? That's 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 you're one of those cases. But then okay. people back up and always want proof. And my response when, when it comes to you, Travis, is like, what did you want Travis to do? Come back with a Zeta Reticuli T-shirt, right? <laughs> Well, yeah, you what, know, and, what is it that you, know, you want? I constantly ask, oh, by the way, did you happen to take anything with you? Right. Like, oh, yeah, I did. I just forgot to mention it till now, <laughs> you know. Um, Dr. Harder made the point that um, the evidence in my case would have been sufficient to convict somebody of murder. Right. To, to, to inflict the death penalty on somebody. That, it's, it's that kind of certainty you know, if you had six witnesses without lie detector tests, you know, uh, it would be considered an open and shut case that nobody would would doubt. Uh, but all of a sudden, when it involves uh, other worlds, then suddenly the burden is just beyond ridiculous. Uh, you know, they consider nothing to be proof, I guess. Do you have a Zeta Reticuli T-shirt that you haven't whipped out? <laughs> No, but you know, if you look at the evidence in in the aggregate, um, it's overwhelming. I mean, it's it's beyond uh, anything that anybody would d- dispute if it wasn't involving the UFOs and aliens. You know. And what about uh, a really quick snowflake in general and that area? Um, have there been additional sightings out there? And have you seen anything? In, in, well, in addition. yes, there have been additional sightings in this area, and, you know, it goes way back into prehistory, too. But that's not unusual. I don't think Snowflake in any way stands out as being unique. You know, there may be a preference of this, uh, of, of, you know, activity of these be- beings for for remote areas, or it, it might just be that, you know, the, the, the open skies, uh, you know, uh, favor sightings, but uh, I, I really think you know. Um, uh, over the years, I've I've had reports and uh, emails and letters from all over the world, and you know, there's there's just no one area where this predominates. You know, it's it's uh, an Earth-based phenomenon, of course, but uh, it's huge. Yeah, and. Uh, going back to my same uh, uh, thought uh, from the beginning of my first question, which is you've had so much time to reflect now, and we've all read Fire in the Sky. And so when between that book where I remember you saying that it was just, hey, it was just a day, right? It was just a normal day, right? Ordinary work day, Just an yeah. ordinary work day, an ordinary day. So... But now, uh, from fire in the sky and the experience to today, and looking back, has your memory stirred a little bit? Was there something that made that day just a little bit different? Oh, not really. Not not until we saw that uh, glow coming through the trees. Uh, but uh, that definitely changed everything. And it changed our lives forever. I mean, you know, the, the, everybody on the crew was just transformed. Now, some of the crew has has come forward lately, and fascinating uh, stuff too, as well in the conversations, and and you can feel the emotion. You weren't the only one affected by this; they all were. Um, can can you take us through that? Uh, where where is everybody today uh, from the team? Well, um, we weren't a, a, a close knit group of friends, you know, and uh, because the incident ended the job, uh, it sort of broke up the 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 collaboration. You know, we we did get together for uh, uh, um, you know media events, 
interviews and that sort of thing on occasion. But um, we, a lot of us just pretty much went our separate ways. Um, a couple of the crew have passed away. Um, Alan Dallas uh, had a heart attack. Uh, well, I guess uh, both of them. You know, Dwayne Smith also. And uh, it was kind of... Uh, um, strange the way that came off, you know. I, I'd been looking for Dwayne Smith. Uh, he just kind of disappeared, and you know, I guess uh, over the years uh, had lost touch. And I had a ex police officer friend who had a private detective friend who tracked uh, Dwayne Smith down, and I did a a phone interview with him and uh, talked to him about the possibility of him coming out and doing interviews with me and, you know, um, talking about what happened back then, you know, because, you know, people want to hear from their perspective too. And I'm so glad I take that interview with him because uh, before we could actually, you know, um, make real our plan to, to, you know, have him come out and speak with me. Mm-hmm. He he had a heart attack and uh, and died. Uh, died right. Uh, wow. Thanksgiving. Wow. And this is uh, and the documentary too. By the way, Travis is uh, extraordinary. Jennifer Stein did uh, such a good job on that. And, yeah, it's profound. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. And even for me, when I thought that I knew everything about the case, and you know, I've been hanging out with you and. I thought that, no that that film hit it right, or, and, and you just said it was great. But is there anything that you would change, or maybe that uh, that was missing from the film? And, you know, you can always fine tune things. I get that. But, well, you know, uh, some of the research is actually ongoing, but you know, it was uh, very um, um, interesting that they had. Um, included uh, the aspects of the accelerated tree growth that, you know, hadn't really been, been given adequate attention in the past. Right. That uh, there was accelerated growth of the trees nearest where it happened. Uh, but And we'd known that for some years, but what was discovered more recently is that the effect was more directional, that the tree um, layers on the side of the tree towards where the craft had been were uh, uh, had a greater amount of this accelerated growth, and the, and the opposite side of the tree had a reduced uh, amount of accelerated growth. If you catch my meaning, uh, right, right. You know, a, a tree produces one growth ring for each year, but in the case of these trees, they were producing greatly uh, ex- increased. Um, uh, growth rate on the side of the tree towards where the craft had been. And, and you know, you could trace the the trees on the edge of the clearing uh, in a circumference uh, from where the craft had been, and uh, it, it, it wasn't consistent with any um, um, direction of the compass. It was all pointed back towards that craft as being the the center cause of this uh, accelerated growth the uh, and, oh, go uh, ahead. that was a that was a big leap forward because you know until then uh because the core sample the first core sample that had been taken was done in a way to minimize damage to the tree uh it wasn't uh discovered that the effect was directional so that was um very interesting and then some additional uh, information that this effect was observed in the pine trees around the Chernobyl nuclear accident. So it's associated with uh, the effect of radiation on on pine trees. And shouldn't that type of uh, comparison and analysis from uh, that location in Snowflake and that data collected be used in other, you know, uh, evidence collection points of 
uh, of different UFO sightings. So maybe there is a consistency of what is going on. Not just, you know, the changes in snowflake that, pr- uh, you know, proves what happened there with you or helps, you know, support the case, but that this should be used uh, with other with other sightings around the world. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, uh, uh, a lead that needs to be followed up on. Um, Jennifer, in, in, in doing the research for the uh, Travis film, uh, tried to uh, get the interest of the Tree Ring Laboratory uh, at the University of Arizona. But uh, they, uh, even though that was her alma mater, uh, um, were uh, I, apparently... Uh, uh, put off by the uh, by the uh, UFO aspect of the yeah. issue. You know, as soon as that comes into play, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> as soon as that comes into play, all bets are off. And yeah, that's their, really... their, uh, their scientific uh, objectivity, or at least their curiosity, uh, gets blunted somehow. Yeah, you just say something else, right? <laughs> what caused this? <laughs> uh, I had a flat tire. Okay, we can look into this. Flat tires are cause, causing stunted tree growth. Okay, <laughs> you'll get that report. But, you know, bring in UFO. Um, I wanted to ask you this. Uh, have you, are you concerned uh, ever that they may come back and, and try to find you? Oh, yeah. I was extremely worried about that in the immediate aftermath. You know, I was terrified to go out uh, into the woods or, you know, out at night and that kind of stuff. But, you know, as time went on and reoccurrences didn't um, manifest, I I sort of relaxed quite a bit on that issue. But uh, um, there was a subsequent sighting of another craft that uh, my reaction uh, revealed to me that subconsciously, at least, I must have had uh, some lingering uh, concern about that particular sure. issue. Um, this was in 2014. I had attended um, a, a talk at uh, Burbank MUFON in, in L.A. Um, Jan Harzan had just recently become the head of MUFON, and he gave a talk, and uh, so did Tracy Torme, the screenwriter on Fire in the Sky. And, uh, you know, I was in attendance. And after this talk, we uh, were headed up the five to, uh, you know, connect with the freeway back to Arizona. And this, uh, these three lights started coming towards us. And, the, and uh, the closer it got, the more this was obviously something quite unusual. Uh, it was a, a giant black triangle. What? It had... Uh, a light on each of the three points. It came at us very rapidly, and it was huge. It was this thing was huge, and it's. Uh, I was amazed at how quickly it could stop, and it stopped right over the top of us. But th- this is the thing I'm uh, that brought this up is that uh, my son was driving, and he says, "Do you, is you, we should we pull over, get a picture or something?" And I said, "No, keep going," and. I'm wishing that I had not done that, you know. I wish I had got the picture. But the fact that I said, keep going, uh, you know, revealed to me that I I was more nervous about uh, recurrence than I had thought. Right. But I I wouldn't have related this this story to anybody because there was only me and uh, two other witnesses, my son and uh, one other person. Right, but um, my other son, when we got back to Arizona, found a website that I'd never heard of, but uh, it was uh, one that takes UFO reports, and there was over a dozen uh, people independently reporting sighting that object at that time and place. This website was set up kind of like Google Maps, where there's little circles with numbers in them for each of the reports, and and everybody right around there uh, saw this same thing. So, you know, we had um, at least a dozen other witnesses. So I, I you know, felt good about uh, um, 
going public with this sighting. Yeah, I remember that night when you spoke here and uh, with uh, Tracy. I was on the air that night, and you were on. I think you were on Fade to Black to talk about you, uh, you know, coming to Burbank because we're in Burbank, uh, right down the street. I had no idea that that happened afterwards. That's that's pretty crazy. Let me, let, me, yeah. let me ask you this, though. Do you think, A, that there was a connection to uh, going back to 75, number one? And if you do think that, do you, do, you, do you think that they knew it was you in the car? Well, uh, yeah. You know, it might seem kind of egotistical because, you know, this is happening over a city like L.A., you know, millions of people. But the odds against them stopping directly over the top of us what what are the odds you know it they could have stopped anywhere but they stopped directly over the top of us and the point of the triangle that was pointed in the direction that it had been traveling rotated in place until that uh, uh, point of the craft was pointed towards the pacific and then it shot off in that direction and so i really do think that somehow they knew we were there now I know I made the joke of Zeta Reticuli. Um, I was, you know, just trying to make a point about the proof. But now looking back, and I, I, again, I want to do this for the rest of the evening. You know, looking back, let's try to assess. You know, from where you are today, you've had so much time to think about it. Did did they reveal where they were from? Is have you ever tried to figure that out? No, no, I, I did not. Uh... Uh, I was, you know, basically screaming, babbling, all kinds of questions, pleading, begging, you know, to to discover what my situation was. I, you know, I had no idea whether I was in, you know, really bad danger or, or you know, what what the, my situation was. But I didn't get a, get an answer to that question. Our guest tonight is Travis Walton, and you know, we're just going to do an open-ended conversation between friends. So we're going to continue this right after this short break. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. I'll be right back. Stay with us. Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Hello, Fader Knots. This is Jimmy Church, and I'm introducing New Pharma, a company whose products are based on science, human function based on the endocannabinoid system or ECS. New Pharma firmly believes in this science, and their research indicates that support of the ECS provides the beneficial effects for a healthy lifestyle. New Pharma's science includes relief capsules for pain relief, sleep capsules, which are natural support for occasional sleeplessness, foundation is support for your ECS, and fit capsules support your active lifestyle. Just click on the banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code F2B for a 33% discount on all of their products. Or visit NewPharma.com for all of the knowledge on the science. That's G-N-U-Pharma.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. Hello, I'm Katini, and you're listening to my very man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. Well, the <laughs> just... <laughs> We are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to J. 
Jimmy Church. The revolution. Ancient Life Oil. Life changing. The real oil. CBD is truly ancient life oil from the source. This oil has no psychoactive effect and is also legal in all 50 states. When you're healthy, you're happy. The truth about this wonderful plant is that it wants to give back to mankind life, longevity, and happiness. Ancient Life Oil are golden grade, all organic, non GMO, and infused with high quality liquid coconut oil. It's simple. Just go to ancient ancientlifeoil.com today that's ancientlifeoil.com the best purest organic and non-gmo cbd in the world go back lee tappy the statements made regarding these products have not been evaluated by the food and drug administration these products are not intended to diagnose treat cure or prevent any disease please consult your healthcare professional about potential interactions or other possible complications before using any product This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. Our guest tonight, Travis Walton. The segment of Fade to Black is proudly brought to you by River Moon Coffee. Let's go to the River Moon Coffee banner over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Use the promo code F2B Blend, and you will get 15% off of your order. Now, Travis. Have yeah. you ever done night vision? You know, night vision, uh, you know, gone out uh, to do a sky yeah, I've, watch. Yeah, I've been at some of these uh, sky watches where they actually have some night vision equipment pointed skyward. And it's really amazing a lot of stuff that goes on up there that if you have the right frequency, uh, there's stuff that is not normally visible to the naked eye is going on right over our heads. I know. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? Does it affect you emotionally when you go through that? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, it, and, look, I've never been abducted, right? I've never had, I don't think, uh, a one-on-one encounter, but maybe I have. But if I had gone through something like your experience and then go out there with night vision, I mean, because I'm emotionally uh, affected by it without, you know, the history. Yeah. And so the, do you remember uh, three years ago out at uh, contact, you were there with us uh, when all of those sightings were going off that night, did you happen to see anything on that Saturday? Were you out there with every, every blah, blah, everybody? Um, I heard about it, but I I didn't go. Oh, okay. It was pretty nutty, man. It it, it, did. Yeah. It got a little out of uh, control there for a second. Yeah, because I've I've often you know wondered for those out there because you have the you have if if, if you've never done it before and you're out there for the first time it's a, it's an epiphany it's a life changing thing. But if you're somebody that's gone through some some experiences in the past, you know how that would affect them emotionally. I you know it's like visiting a crime scene you know would you want to go and do that again or would you back off of it but well, to be aware of something it was, <laughs> it's it's so so certain in your mind that you know it's a matter of fact to you and it, it's astounding and amazing to to others it's 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 two different worlds yeah absolutely now um now i want i've always wanted to ask you this When you see other depictions, maybe artwork, could be movies uh, or or what have you, of different, you know, greys or Nordics or, you know, different depictions of E.T., do you look at it and go, no, that's not right? (laughs) You guys got it wrong. I forgive them. (laughs) Uh, They're doing their best. Um, Some of them, uh, I say, that that does look familiar, but... um, one thing that I wanted uh, to take the opportunity to do on your show was to see if I could get um, uh, people to come forward who were uh, additional witnesses to that giant black triangle. Um, just, just uh, especially if they had uh, told someone else, wrote it down, or reported it to someone, 
this was uh, February 19th or 20th of uh, 2014. It was on a Tuesday. Uh, it was Tuesday yeah. night. Okay. And uh, so a- anybody else that uh, saw this uh, uh, independent of us, especially if they reported it or in any way have some sort of reference uh, from that time, I'd, I'd appreciate uh, hearing from them. Yeah, absolutely. You can contact me, and I will uh, p- uh, pass everything on to Travis. You can contact uh, Travis directly, too, as well. But I'll take care of that. And to nail this down, that Tuesday night, UPARS ends at uh, 9 o'clock. You know, by 10 o'clock, you guys had probably left. So you jumped on the 5 freeway right after uh, uh, the presentation with uh, Torme. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, we were headed north and, and, you know, hadn't gone too far up there. Uh, I'd say we were about, what, 5, 10 miles? Okay. And uh, so that's the uh, geographical... Were you in the mountains yet? Were you into the grapevine? Uh, we were, we weren't quite to the mountains yet. Uh, okay. So it, you, it seemed to be coming from the mountains, uh, at first. Uh, right. And what's in, you know, I, I don't know if you know this, well, you probably do now because of the sighting, but if you continue in that direction, right on the other side of those mountains is the Mojave desert skunk works, right? All of the top secret programs that are going on out there. And Absolutely. and if if ET is going to go and observe, there's a lot of sightings out here, and I think it's directly connected to that that they would yeah. be. Over- yeah, you know, and I'm not so certain that it isn't some secret military weapon, uh, but even if that is the case, I think they were deliberately putting it on a show for us. I mean, it was just too big of a coincidence for them to stop dead right over the top of us and, and make a right angle turn. How big was it? It was huge. I, I, I remember saying uh, that it was bigger than a Walmart, uh, but you know, it was, it looked, you know, an eighth of a mile across or something. It was gigantic. And there, there was a similar sighting here a week or so ago in this area, but it wasn't uh, reported as being that big. I didn't see it, but uh, people that saw it, and uh, now you're on the five freeway, so there's traffic. Yeah. Yeah, you weren't the only witness. Or, this is the crazy part, right? Maybe it was just for you. Maybe nobody else saw it. <laughs> well, that would be, uh, except they did report it. Uh, oh, that's right. That's right. UFOstalker.com. There was at least a dozen, maybe 15 other witnesses by the next morning. And these these are reports that are Independent, you know, each each person makes their own um, report. So, uh, to me, it it was a surprising that that many people would be even aware of this particular place to report, because um, you know there's a variety of uh, collection data collection sites and whatnot. But uh, here, you know, this happened to me uh, um, all those years before. And I'd never heard of UFOstalker.com, so. Right, um, right, right. Well, we'll I'm definitely uh, going to look into that. And there was, uh, I, I'm looking here on Twitter, by the way, and the amount of questions that are coming in from the audience is uh, extraordinary. So I'm going to jump back and forth and try to get some of these in uh, for everybody. And one of them is is pretty interesting. So, again, it goes back to the reflection thing, and you've had a lot of time to look back on on uh, November 5th, 1975. You, As you guys approached and, and you saw something up in the distance, um, looking back, do you think that was accidental in that you came upon this craft, or could it have been the opposite could they have been waiting for you? Maybe they saw your truck lights coming up the road. Which way do you well, think you know, it went? Well, for a long time, I really favored the accidental um, uh, intersection there. Uh, that theory, I, I guess I preferred it because if it was accidental, then it's less likely to happen again. You know, that they, they weren't singling us out in any way. But 
a um, couple of the guys on the crew, uh, um, Steve and, and Alan, they they seemed to think that they were these beings were waiting for us. Now, um, they also had the theory that I was under outside control. The reason I got out of the truck and they didn't was that th- that the aliens had uh, mental telepathy, that they had some sort of hypnotic effect. And I said, well, no, it, it felt to me like it was my idea. Right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, Steve says, well, uh, if they have uh, mind control, they can make you think it's your idea. Uh, so <laughs> it's kind of uh, hard to argue. It's a circular argument there. It, it but, is. Yeah. That's why I laughed. It was just like, well, they, yeah, he was convinced it was his idea. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh-huh. Now, uh, it, it, it shoot straight with me for a second. I know. Well, you always do. But and it's this. Would you get out of the truck if this happened again? No, I would not. I I can't understand why I would do such a thing. You know, it seems like such a crazy thing to do uh, at the time and uh, something I live to regret. And, you know, I think part of the reason Steve and Alan and some of those guys were trying to come up with reasons that I got out and they didn't is that, People ask them, how come you didn't get out? And I don't know, maybe they're making an excuse for not getting out. But but uh, I think it's more likely you didn't need an excuse for doing such a crazy thing. Well, they only got out after it was gone. So, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that was always uh, uh, something funny to me because I think that's a natural response. I think that everything that the way that it went down was probably how it would go down with any group of guys in a truck going through that same experience. Mm-hmm. Now, well, you know, the follow up research, it was just accidental. It took forever to even discover the, the accelerated tree growth. But um, I had a team of people doing uh, looking at um, geological surveys and, you know, uh, underground water uh sources, everything, trying to figure out why would the aliens be there? Right. Um, you know, there's a, a, a herd of wild horses that live in that vicinity, and the the Mustang, the, the head stallion, uh, it marks his territory in a particular way, and it, uh, he uh, puts his mound right there at the turnoff on that road that we came down. Now, whether there's any connection between these wild horses and and this activity, I don't know. We're looking at everything, you know. Um, I did an interview here recently with um, Rob Lowe and his sons. They they got a a paranormal show. Mm -hmm. And um, when uh, the the, the show aired, uh, in between my segment, it was kind of a two-parter, uh, my segment, and then there was a, a lady that did this stuff about lightning. And uh, uh, Rob Lowe said, uh, Travis told me that the aliens were in that area looking for fulgamite. Well, I know I never said that to Rob Lowe because I didn't never heard of fulgamite until I saw the show. Uh, but I looked it up online and I found out that, you know, that it's a mineral that is formed when lightning strikes the ground. Now, uh, the Mogollon Rim area right there has the highest frequency of lightning strikes of any place in the continental United States outside of the Everglades. And, you know, anything that happens in the Everglades is probably over water. But um, when when lightning, uh, this incredible uh, voltage and, and temperature hits the ground, it melts the uh, sand together in um, in a in a, a non geological way. It forms substances that, that you just don't get uh, from natural processes or anything other than lightning strike, which I guess is natural. But but uh, even though I didn't say that, I I think it's a pretty good theory, you know, that maybe that's what they were after, because that is something that was unique about that area. There's this 
high frequency of lightning strikes. You know, it's responsible for a lot of uh, forest fires and and whatnot. And um, you can walk down the high uh, ridge road there, the rim road, and uh, you're you're basically within sight of more than one tree that's been hit by lightning at any one time. So uh, I can see that millions of volts in extreme temperatures could form substances that might be of interest to these beings um, um, that would attract them to the area uh, in particular. So I thought that was a pretty good theory. And um, Yeah, maybe, I, had never, uh, I had never heard of that before. And when we bought our house, uh, we found a big chunk of it in our backyard. We didn't know what it was, so we posted pictures. And we we thought hey, we struck it rich. We've got this big right, <laughs> this big thing, and everybody no that that's formed when lightning hits the ground and and fuses everything together. I had no idea. So you weren't the only person that's never heard of it. So it's a unique process, and based on what uh, minerals are in that particular sand. Uh, could be quite unique in what's formed, but I guess this is popular at gym shows. I just I've never held a piece of it before. Yeah, I've got a big I've got a big boulder, the size of a basketball, big chunk, and it's weird how it forms. And you can tell that once you get the lightning explanation, how how it looks. Yeah, it it, it makes sense. Uh, why you mentioned uh, a minute ago about regret. And that you regretted it. What do, what do you mean by that? Is it the the scrutiny and the under the microscope part of it? When you say regret, right. you know, um, you know, you try to look for the good in anything in order to you know cope with it. You know, you got to look on the bright side if you can. But you know, I I just much rather uh, have my old life back. You know, I, I you know I had. Uh, many career options, the things I could do with my life. And, and most of those are, you know, forever closed to me just on account of being who I am, you know, how long and, did it take to get back to normal? I never did, but, um, I worked at it and, you know, gradually over time, uh, just always tried to live as normal a life as possible. I had kids. I wanted to provide a, a, a as normal a home life for them as possible and you know they've grown up into you know a fine fine bunch of kids so I'm proud of them and what they've become yeah and you've you, you've shared some of that with me you're very very proud of your children and uh, but one has to ask the obvious have they had any experiences is there any connection because you, You've heard the same things uh, that I have from different researchers and experiencers that it tends, these experiences tend to follow families. Uh, Tend to follow families, yeah. Yeah, and how about you? You know, uh, it's it's kind of a thing that I'm scared to to look at, but uh, there's some pretty profound stories in in that regard that, you know, it's probably not fair for me to, to really go public with, you know, they... They've got their lives to live, but uh, um, there's there's some signs of uh, that would kind of uh, curious indicators. Uh, uh, a, a screen memory that I'm, I'm I hear a lot about is owls, you know. Right. And uh, it's uh, a a regular, you know, creature that uh, humans are familiar with, but, you know, they, they've got this huge set of eyes, uh, as do the greys. And um, so I, I can see that there could be some sort of an allegory, a sort of a connection there. And when my oldest son was just a baby, I was just carrying him, uh, down the hall, and he looked at the picture of this owl and just burst into tears and started crying. I mean, he was always a totally confident kid that, you know, very um, socially agreeable. And, you know, when we took him to 
his first uh, day at preschool, he just, he never looked back. You know, he wasn't the least bit uh, insecure about being left there. Um, he's always, you know, been outgoing and confident. But for some reason, the pet, that picture of that owl just freaked him out. And uh, there was a, a similar incident uh, with him at an, on another time. Wow. And there's one other, uh, again, and we'll, we'll we'll move on from this. But your children are all extremely talented in the arts, and you're very proud of this. And I've seen some of the uh, of your you know your personal pictures, and and that's really really cool. But that they are they also came from you. They're your children. <laughs> did you have a, you play guitar? But did you have an artistic aspect that ran through the DNA of your family? Or could it have come from off planet because their talent is extreme? Yeah, yeah, they're very, very talented. They're they're better than I am, but <laughs> right, I don't right. Know. My my father, uh, I learned later in life, had actually been in the uh, in a band with uh, Marty Robbins, uh, the country the, singer. Know, really, country singer. Yeah, yeah. El Paso. You know? Yeah, they lived next door to each other. They. They got out of the Navy at the same time, lived in Phoenix, and and they you know, they had a band, and they played at local nightclubs there, Mr. Lucky's and different uh, uh, cowboy uh, uh, entertainment Bars, clubs. yeah, cowboy bars, you can say it. Yeah, but see, I never, I never knew anything about that, and, you know, after my mother's divorce, she never really wanted to talk about him much at all. But, right. Uh, yeah. By the way, your dad was in a band with Marty Rob. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, this guitar that's been banging around the house all these years. <laughs> right. That was Marty Robbins. No. And so that's that's the the secrets that families keep. Right. That's that's an uh, that's funny. That's funny. I wanted to. Um, uh, we're going to head towards a break, but I want to kind of warm up to this, and then we'll pick it up after the break. Um, you follow the UFO community, you know, the news, um, and people speak with you about what's going on out there. Oh, by the way, Heidi Neal told me to tell you what's up. So I just got that out of the way. Um, yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's, UK. yeah, she's amazing. She's amazing. Is, yeah. is disclosure. People are out there calling this the days of disclosure and, and the media has been covering this heavily, uh, since December 16th. For you, are these the days of disclosure, or is it something else? Well, yes, I think it is important, uh, uh, and the government is finally acknowledging, you know, that they've been looking at this. It's not like uh, I didn't know that, but uh, I'm glad they're admitting it now, and it does add a certain amount of uh, corroboration to, you know, um, what happened here. Uh, And... It goes along with something I've been saying all along is, you know, people have got to, you know, take this in stride. You know, as interesting, as fascinating as the subject is, I mean, it's only natural people would be really, really intrigued by this whole thing. But when I say just, you know, just just think of them as those people from way over there that we don't know too much about. People seem kind of disappointed. That I think they like the metaphysical wowie zowie supernatural uh, take on it. But uh um, I think we're going to have to get used to the idea that, hey, this is just uh, the way it is. And Well, that's interesting because you went through uh, some of the heaviest media coverage that one can go through when it comes to the UFO subject. And they didn't, they didn't quite treat it the way that they did back in December. It, seem, it seems like they were taking it more serious. They weren't cueing the X-Files music followed by a joke. Well, you know, I I really have to come to the government's defense in their secrecy. You know, a lot of people um, looked at the government's reluctance to acknowledge this as being some kind of indication that there was something nefarious going on. But I don't think so at all. I I think um, the the inherent uh, disruption that occurs uh, in people's thinking uh, was something that they were naturally trying to uh, avoid, and um, you know I could I could go on about you know how 
uh, for, the, the way it used to be, you know, the, that this was just so, you know, fantastical that that the 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 consequences of open acknowledgement may have been just a little bit too much to handle at the time. So this project that was revealed back in December had threat in in the name, and uh, I, I take exception to that, but. Um, I can understand that. You're, this is the Pentagon. These are people who are responsible for the defense of this country. And these are military guys, hard-nosed people. Uh, where are you going to get the funding if you can't justify it in terms of defending against a threat? So so it's understandable that they would uh, name it that, even if uh, what they expect to find isn't really necessarily a threat at all. And for you, what is disclosure? I mean, what would be disclosure for you? Do you have your own Travis Walton definition? Well, for me, it happened back in 1975. You of know, course. That was disclosure. You know, I became certain at that point. Uh, this last December, these announcements that they've been studying this, that they have, uh, you know, uh, uh, debris and things um, and... Uh, film and very they, they've got plenty of evidence they've been studying and um i do um i i, I don't doubt that uh, that there, there's still quite a bit of it that's still a total mystery to them but they they're at least acknowledging this is real I, it was pretty. This is this is the other part of it for me, Travis. There's also been a pretty a quiet response out of Washington, neither confirming or denying it. And I find that interesting, too, as well. They they haven't tried to silence this story or tried to misdirect the mass media. That- well, it was kind of uh, a typical news dump on a Friday uh, is is what they when they want to get something out but don't want it. To, uh, right. they, they want to minimize the amount of attention it gets, and, <laughs> and so you know I, I, that's understandable. Yeah, that's exactly how it played out too, as well. Maybe this will go away by Monday, right? <laughs> that's, yeah, and and certainly the opposite happened. And did that surprise you? That it stayed in the headlines on every network, television, online for two or three weeks. And it's kind of continuing today, too. 60 Minutes just did their piece on it. So it hasn't gone away. Are you surprised about the amount of legs that the story has had? Well, it's not anything new. You know, and a lot of people who act like, you know, they ju- that the aliens have just now discovered us and we need to be really wary of that. No, 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 no. Um, Mucho Kaku was uh, doing an interview on television a while back, and uh, he was saying, you know, people keep imagining these civilizations to be maybe, uh, you know, a few hundred years ahead of us, uh, you know. But um, based on the age of these star systems, they could easily be hundreds of thousands or millions of years ahead of us. So there, there's no comparison in terms of the level of technology. And you got to get used to that. Uh, um, virtually everything technological that we as humans uh, have come up with is, you know, maybe a couple hundred years old uh, at the oldest. And, you know, everything technological is, is recent, comparatively speaking. So, how far would they come in a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand years, let alone a million? And uh, so, uh, certainly, they've been aware of us for a very, very long time, long before we had fighter jets. <laughs> you know, the, the Hollywood fantasy of uh, fighter jets uh, doing, you know, dogfights in the sky with UFOs invading. That's just ridiculous yeah um i i insist that if they wanted this planet uh for themselves it would already be theirs period yep. you know you, th- th- no contest you and i wouldn't be here right now i mean yeah, that's that's it, it, it'd be over you know let's take a break right here our guest tonight the one and only travis walton it's been four years since he's been on fade to black we'll be right back more with travis right after this short break stay with us
Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk. Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón. Y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. ¡Claro que sí! Hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. And last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All new Mana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the new Mana pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the new Mana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autographed Fade to Black t-shirt. Seriously. Go back, Lee Tappy. Do you worry a lot whether you're a college student, busy professional, parent, or grandparent? Ongoing stress and elevated levels of the stress hormone cortisol can rob your memory, your health, and your future. Now you can combat the effects of stress and anxiety while improving your memory and recall at the same time with the dietary supplement Calm and Clever. Studies show that the ingredients in Calm and Clever reduce cortisol by as much as 30% in one to two weeks. Call 1-800-758-8746 or calmandclever.com. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> KGRARadio.com Hi, folks. CBD is the home run hitter for health right now. Why, you ask? Because of what it does for the body. Unfortunately, I can't tell you all about the benefit. You know, there's reasons. Do your due diligence and log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Ancient Life Oil uses organic ingredients and is blended in coconut oil for some of the best benefits. Legal in 50 states and non-psychoactive. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. You are listening to Fate to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Rhys Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is revolution. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow me on Twitter right now at J Church Radio. Very simple. Come and join in on the conversation. Got some great questions here for Travis, by the way, on Twitter. And this next segment of Fade to Black is proudly brought to you by New Mana. And I just want to announce they have three days left. You have three days left on their special promotion. Jimmy10 is the promo code. 10% off of your order, free shipping, and a free autographed Fade to Black t-shirt. Travis, one of my proudest items that I have is the photograph that you sent me of you wearing your Fade to Black t-shirt in your house. <laughs> that, that, oh, okay. that is one of the coolest things ever, man. It's one of my one of my souvenirs. When now, keeps it. Have you have you was that the only time you've worn it? <laughs> was it just that one? <laughs> well, I I didn't want to wear it out. I want to keep it new. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool, man! So cool. Now you mentioned before the break, and I found this very very interesting that uh, that 
Maybe in the past it was the wrong time for disclosure. This time around, with all of this mass media coverage, the world didn't go to hell in a handbasket. Uh, it, it, yeah, I, I think the world uh, uh, took it a lot better. You know, the news media uh, reports uh, were m- more straight faced. They didn't do the obligatory little tinfoil bat, little green men joke, you know? Right, right, right. And so maybe, right? Well, this is this is the other thing. You don't need disclosure, and I get that. But there's two ways to look at this. If we are alone in the universe, then why take care of this planet? There's nothing to live for, right? Let's just party. <laughs> If there is, if if there is uh, ET friends out there and brothers, then we have a reason to not only take care of this planet, take care of ourselves, and figure this out because there's a reason, right? There's hope. I think it's the exact opposite, don't you? Yeah, yeah, and I think they would like to uh, assist. Um, I, I really do think they mean well, and they would like to nudge us in a constructive direction and uh, that's a huge leap but uh, there's been a lot of um, people who uh, are quite prominent well-known people who you know say that their personal experience uh, was a turning point in their in their careers in their understanding in their development that um that it um stimulated a a great uh well it was an inspiration and uh the um you know some of these are well known you know um um tesla um but you know a lot of uh, creative people um you know writers musicians um, actors, um, they have their personal experience that profoundly redirected their lives. And um, there was um, an old legend about uh, uh, the muse, you know, that there was an inspirational entity that would, uh, you know, you know, inspire people, you know, give them uh, uh, a boost in the direction of something constructive. And uh, there was a there was a movie way back. It was, it was Xanadu uh, was the name of it. It was about it, the the muse or the muses in, in, in plural uh, being actual entities, uh, but um, not alien entities, but uh, sort of supernatural. But uh, to me, um, this is very measured, very limited. I do believe there's probably something akin to a prime directive. Uh, Science fiction has this thing, uh, a non-interference directive, uh, where there's a rule against more advanced uh, civilizations just delivering raw technology to less developed uh, uh, civilizations. And... And that makes sense too. Yeah, it does. And especially humans <laughs> with their proclivity for uh, destructive uh, um, directions. Yeah, at, using it for money, using it for progression, using it to kill, use you know all of the wrong reasons. We do that with any technology that that we create here. So that's that's just the way that it is. Um, well, you know, we need um, to make a, a, a smaller carbon footprint. We we need an alternative to carbon-based fuels, but I don't believe that to disrupt that overnight wouldn't be anything other than extremely disruptive. I mean, the world economies are dependent upon petrodollars, and I, I think that there would be a worldwide economic collapse if... Uh, if um, oil was obsolete overnight. One question that uh, constantly comes up about you is communication. Now, you did have uh, your complaints and the things that you were verbalizing on that ship, and we've talked about that uh, many times. 
Was there anything that came back, either verbally uh, in a language that maybe you didn't understand, or was there anything telepathic? Was there any communication that went back and forth? Well, I don't know about back and forth, but there uh, was, you know, some particularly uh, profound personal experiences that I I really hesitate to uh, make public because uh, I don't have any witnesses. You know, I, I've always tried to stick to the things that I can prove. Uh, absolutely certain and proof of it in my own heart and mind, but nothing that, you know, was going to convince the, an independent observer. Right, right. So you're saying that possibly uh, something like that did happen. When I say back and forth, the fourth came from you. Right? <laughs> you were speaking. Um, but was there, a, was there a back? Did they respond? Did they understand what you were saying? Um, later. Later, um, certain things were uh, provided to me. How so? What do you mean? Well, I, uh, I'm I'm getting out over my skis here. <laughs> I I want you to get out over your skis, but it's me. I know you do. That's <laughs> it's that's me. your job. But, it's me, uh, Travis. It's me. If you're not comfortable, that's fine. But I yeah, and ten million of your listeners. <laughs> right, 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 right. But um, you know, I you know my interest in this and. And and our friendship. It the thing is, it's just you and I sitting here talking. And these are the things I would I would ask because you know I I I, I want to know. We all do. Well, I'll put it this way: I do believe they are telepathic, and I do believe they try to limit their effects, but it's not absolute. That's very interesting, and. I'll go so far as to say that I think that everybody that has any kind of a sighting or uh, a major contacting sort of an incident, um, that the uh, it's not an accident. It's not like uh, these beings are like slapping their foreheads and said, "Oh, dang, we messed up again. The, the human spotted us again." You know, no, no, no. They're not that dumb. Uh, they know where everybody is. And I believe they have a way of identifying individuals, of whether they're tuning into brain waves or DNA or what. I, I really think that they follow individuals. They're what they call respecter of persons, you know. They, it's not an accident, and it's not random. Um, I used to really scoff at people who would say, you know, I, I was looking up at it, and it seemed to be reacting to me when I did this and did that, you know, I thought, Oh come on, you know, you're you're an, an ant on the on the ant hill down there to them, but uh, I don't think that anymore. I really do think that they uh, know these people and follow them, and they can they can pick them out of a crowd decades later. You know, Rita just told me uh, to tell you wear the t-shirt all you want. You have a lifetime free refill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> that that's funny. Um, and and somebody just uh, replied back saying, you know, it 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 is a valid question, Jimmy. You know, what did they say, and and how did they say it? Um, and th the reason why I find that interesting is I have had my personal experiences, but I don't get down to specifics. And the reason why, Travis, probably the same for you. I don't want to influence people, right? I don't want to influence their experience or maybe change their memories of it. Is that one of the reasons why you're holding back? Well, yeah. And, you know, plus, you know, I... I think my mission is uh, having the kind of evidence and, uh, and witnesses involved in my incident that uh, m my mission is to, you know, just communicate one thing to people, uh, the, the reality. This is real. And, and, and to take it in stride and not be alarmed about it. And so I, I, I don't want to do anything that sounds uh, or seems 
far out or uh, unfounded, you know. The the documentation that uh, accompanies everything that I have to report uh, uh, is is the source of the credibility that that allows people to understand that this is real and to just uh you know take it in stride we constantly hear the those two words benevolent benevolent and there is a line in the sand when it comes to experiencers researchers and those that feel that they have the evidence to suggest one or the other um couldn't it be could it be both well um I suppose anything's possible, things that I don't. But, you know, I've had over 40 years to uh, think about this and what the various incidents mean and and imply. Uh, And that uh, they could have engineered all that to make me think of them as more uh, benevolent than... Uh, than they actually are. I could be deceived, but um, uh, it's just, I'm just saying in in my opinion, uh, I don't see anything to support the idea that they have sinister intentions for for humans. Now, uh, uh, do you, do you, after you entered the ship and, and it left, did it, do you have, do you know if it left Earth? I don't know, but, you know, I uh, really uh, imagine that with their um, ability to travel, that th- they could have achieved some extraordinary distances in a very short period of time. But I don't, I don't know. I couldn't see or wasn't told where where I was taken. Yeah. You know, you know the... whether that was uh, building somewhere on Earth or on some celestial body light years from here. I don't know. Yeah, the the feeling you get when you drop off the roller coaster, right? That little weightless moment, and you, you know your stomach and that excitement. Did you ever have that kind of feeling of you know of speed, of of weightlessness or anything like that? No, no, nothing that to indicate uh, momentum or deceleration or acceleration or not, and nothing like that. Uh, but you know, I would speculate they probably have means of uh, neutralizing things like uh, inertia. Right. And you also, uh, I want to stay on this uh, 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 line of questioning for a second, but you had also mentioned your extreme thirst, right? (laughs) I mean, five Uh days, right? Five days. Um, Was there any food? Well, I th- I think medically there was indications that it wasn't five days of starvation. I don't recall eating any particular food or you know any identifiable substance or anything like that. But the medical uh, tests on on uh, blood quantities of um, um, enzymes, amino yeah, acids, whatever to indicate starvation. Uh, there was, wasn't an indication of that. Uh, what do they call that? Uh, ketones. Yeah, ketones in uh, in the blood and urine uh, that will indicate if a person's been starving. So you don't think you you don't remember eating? I, you know, the, I have said I would kind of the opposite of Travis. If E. T. came down and said, "Hey, you and Rita, you want to come with us?" I I probably would, Travis, if I knew about the food situation. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm being well, serious. I, I I enjoy eating, and it would uh-huh. really bum me out if I had to go on some trip and eat nothing but bad food. <laughs> that would... <laughs> <laughs> well, you would hope it would be some really great stuff. Right, <laughs> right, right. I mean, that would just kill the moment. Now, um, and and here's this, and I pose this question to everybody. Many of them are friends of yours. Now that you've had this experience, and I know that you said that you wouldn't get out of the truck a second time, but that's because you didn't know. But what if you were invited? What if they came back, the doors open, and they came down and said, you know, Travis, 
how would you like to, you know, just come with us again? We got the foods, you know, sorted out. You can bring somebody with you. If you want to come back, we'll bring you back. But how would you like to come and visit us? Do you go? I, I I would go. You know, actually, you know, I've had uh, right at, in the aftermath of it, and for years afterward, uh, I was terrified at the prospect. But uh, you know, more and more, I've tried to connect emotionally to what I, uh, you know, can appreciate intellectually. Intellectually, I understand they couldn't mean harm, but in order to get rid of the the stress and the fear that would come up every time I would describe that experience. I, I really worked at trying to connect emotionally uh, to uh, what I understand it to be in a factual sense that although I was terrified and, you know, felt mortally wounded and, you know, uh, you know, it was a life and death situation uh, at the time that that wasn't warranted that, you know, it was actually more of a rescue than anything. So um, I, I, I think I've been successful at uh, connecting in that way. It, once I started doing that, you know, the amount of stress that I experienced in in doing a talk and describing the events and, you know, the, the drain feeling that I had afterwards – uh, diminished tremendously. Uh, you know, I don't feel nearly the amount of stress that I that I used to. Have you, <clears throat> the way that you mention that uh, and say it like that, have you gone out alone, you know, by yourself, looked up to the stars and go, okay, let's do this again. Where are you guys? Well, I haven't done that, but I, I probably should uh, be willing to, to do that, you know. Especially if I could get some answers, right? And, you know, and have you have you done that too? Conclusive, right? Conclusive answers, not just things I figure out for myself, but things that they can tell me. I'm imagining some dramatic scene in a you know some 1950s film, some drama. You being out there and looking to the stars and just yelling out, "Why me?" You know, I mean, oh, yeah. is that your first question on the list? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I actually been there. Um, totally. Uh-huh. Um now we talked about night vision and you've just mentioned this this conscious connection and the possibility of that. When you when you go out on these night vision uh expeditions uh or anybody that does and we talk about the CE5s and and the uh the ceremony that they do for that. But you're looking up, and somebody says, you know, blink twice if if you're listening. And that thing blinks twice. It happens, right? It happened to me. Is that uh-huh. is that coincidence? Well, no. I, th- I think that there can be communication one way, two way. Uh, I don't think they're there to be toyed with. It's not like a, some kind of novelty. Let's, <laughs> let's just do this for the uh, gee whiz of it. But... Uh, yeah, I think under certain circumstances that they definitely do uh, reach out. Yeah, reach out and, and say yes. Now, do you think that it's because it's a positive environment that is going down at, at that moment with the, with the gathering? Do you think that they would be more reticent to interact with a negative environment? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, they have, uh, I, I do believe there is a kind of a non-interference directive, a, a, a prime directive. There's definite rules that, uh, they're trying to avoid creating any kind of harm and, uh, they're allowed a certain measured am- amount of positive influence, but it's, uh, it's, um, Got, it got definite rules to it. Yeah, it does. It does. I, I believe I believe that to be the case. Plus, also, I believe in laughter. Right, going out there, let's yeah. let's let's laugh. Let's make some noise. Let's let them know, and and because that sends the right vibration. And speaking of yeah. vibration, oh, go ahead, Travis. 
Well, I, I just you know had a flash of inspiration this last year about the um, uh, non-emotional, the reported uh, mechanical thinking processes of the Greys. No, 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 that's not what happened. It dawned on me that once they became fully telepathic, that it became obsolete to use facial muscles to express anything, that their communication with each other is so full and so intricate that every level, every nuance of emotion is there between uh, these entities and uh, they don't need facial expressions anymore. So we look at them and they seem so um, humorous, <laughs> right. so mechanical, right. but it's not that way at all. Inside them, they're actually living a much richer emotional life than we are. And that's, that's just kind of like, wow, <laughs> you know, it, it took a little while to sink in because so for so long, this, this, this impression that people get that they are dispassionate, that they're unemotional, that they you know, have lost complete touch with emotion, it's, it's a million miles from that. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Because telepathy you... allows them a, a richer, uh, more full expression of emotion. Yeah, because we're not seeing laughter or sadness or anger on their face. That has nothing to do with what is going on inside. Everything is there. Yeah, including total honesty. Oh, that's interesting. See, I knew yeah, yeah, I, they I knew, can't lie to each other. I knew I'd get you off your skis. I knew I. <laughs> I absolutely knew it. I've brought that up uh, so many times. They cannot lie to each other. Yeah. They can't. Would you? <laughs> I've got one minute left before the break. Telepathy is, I think it's a double-edged sword. Would, yeah. you, would, you, would you enjoy that kind of environment, you know, where everything, you're naked, Right? You can't hide well, anything. Well, it requires, along with it, an intrinsic level of uh, advancement. Uh, uh, we would call it spiritual development. That, that's that got to take place simultaneous with that if you're going to be able to handle it. Because like we're saying, you, you're, you're naked. You're, you're naked. You know, it's all there. <laughs> Communication, it's totally open. Your, well, your mind is an open book. <laughs> it is. You're walking down the street uh, buck naked, basically. Yeah. yeah. Let's take a break right here. Our guest tonight is Travis Walton. Fabulous conversation. It's Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, Travis, what's your Twitter? I don't have one. I never Twittered before. Uh, you've so never I, tweeted. I, I, Okay. No, I've never tweeted. <laughs> we'll be right back. More with Travis after this. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal Guard, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER, stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation, and Angioprim is the result, a safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now for a special radio offer from Angioprim. That's angioprim.com slash radio, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M. Angioprim.com slash radio or call 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. 
So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on the smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com Hello, Fader Knots. This is Jimmy Church, and I'm introducing New Pharma, a company whose products are based on science. Human function based on the endocannabinoid system, or ECS. New Pharma firmly believes in this science, and their research indicates that support of the ECS provides the beneficial effects for a healthy lifestyle. New Pharma's science includes relief capsules for pain relief, sleep capsules, which are natural support for occasional sleeplessness, foundation is support for your ECS, and fit capsules support your active lifestyle. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2B for a 33% discount on all of their products. Or visit newpharma.com for all of the knowledge on the science. That's G-N-U-Pharma.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Travis Walton. Four years since he's been on the show. Incredible conversation, and this segment of Fade to Black is proudly brought to you by New Pharma, GNU Pharma. Just click on the banners over at jimmychurchradio.com. Very simple. The promo code is F2B, 33% off of your order. Now, Travis, this is a first-time questions night uh, from me to you, with respect. Um, The movie, which we don't need to discuss, but there was a lot of fear that was presented, and that's Hollywood. And I know that you have told me in years past that you were scared. But was it, well, and you should have been, but do you equate it like a toddler's first visit to the doctor? You know? Yeah, yeah, really. I, I didn't understand my situation, and I had a lot of terror that was just uh, unwarranted. And, I, oh, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. Um, I asked you a question that made you laugh once, and the question was uh, the female entity that was there, um, I asked you if she wore makeup. Do you remember that question? Uh, I remember the question, but I don't remember the answer, but I can tell you what it is. Okay, That's, this is great, because your your answer was, I don't recall, and you laughed. Yeah. Now you've had some time to think about it. Uh, was she wearing makeup? It did not look like makeup to me. Uh, she was quite attractive, but uh, I, I don't think uh, that she wore makeup. Although there was... Um, uh, a gender difference in in the hairstyle, you know. Her hair was longer than his. 
Interesting. So feminine. Yeah, in in our society's terms, and and that's kind of interesting. You know why? Why that? You know, uh, certainly they would have a whole range of societal norms different than ours. Why would that be the same? You know. Did they give you a reason to be scared? Were they ever assertive or aggressive? Well, assertive, yeah, but not aggressive. I was definitely terrified because it seemed like they were in control of my situation and I wasn't. Uh, that that was terrifying uh, because of the feelings that I had inside. I felt mortally wounded. I felt like there was something very wrong inside, and I connected that with them. But uh, in actuality, they were there to remedy that rather than being the cause of it. Yeah, I, I remember uh, when you had suggested you've you've talked about uh, talked about it a lot since then. But that they injured you and they they tried to fix you and heal you. That they felt bad about that. Yeah, uh, and that at least morally they were. The only ones in a position to correct that kind of damage. They knew what they did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't even blame them, you know. It was my impulsive action, my getting too close, that led to this energy uh, discharge. And it may have been something that they were just unable to prevent or control. Yeah, right, right. Now, what about your, what about your sense of time? You know, there was five days that went by on that craft. Uh, in, in in terms of, you know, Earth time and your own body clock, how long did you think you were on that uh, ship? Well, uh, it was quite a revelation, you know. In my initial conversation with my brother after he'd recovered me, uh, was that I thought it was the same night. So I thought so little time had gone by. Uh, that I didn't realize, you know, he's telling me, you know, Travis, there's five days gone by. And that was uh, quite a shock. I, I did not understand it until he said that, that that, that was the case. So um, I, I was probably unconscious quite a bit of the time, uh, unless they have some memory blocking uh, effect going on there. And what about, again, this is, a, you know, this is a fade or not Jimmy Church question, bathroom? Well, that's a good question, and I've been asked that before. People say, well, did you ever use the restroom? No, I'd, I don't recall ever using a restroom, but uh, uh, I would assume that uh, most likely the bodily processes would continue, and it's such a... Uh, a need would come about within a five-day span, certainly. You've always wanted a new film made, and you, you've you been talking about that. Is there any progress? Uh, yeah. Uh, I've uh, been uh, contacted by a number of producers in a position to do something about it, but I guess it takes a little more than that. Uh, I'm primarily interested in uh, greater accuracy, and um, more information. You know, my my goal is to help people to understand the nature of this phenomenon and accept the reality of it. Uh, so uh, I think there can be a very interesting movie without resorting to, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, a wowie zowie uh, sci-fi sort of uh spooky um uh, fear mongering you know there's there's a there's enough uh drama and understandable uh, intensity of emotion without going beyond what actually occurred it 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 it, <laughs> it is a wowie zowie sci-fi film travis yeah the, well, the, the you fear know. the fear side of it it needs to be told from your perspective no doubt but it is as sci-fi as it gets. Yeah, well, it's it's it's, uh, but it's real, you know. Right. And it's it's been here a long time, and uh, you know there are historical uh, evidence uh, that that's come about, you know, that people uh, dig up all the time, and 
I gave a talk here a few years ago to uh, a group of uh, almost a thousand Native Americans, and um, the tales that they have in their prehistory, their long-standing oral traditions about the Sky People, uh, this is nothing new to them. And um, in fact, there's um, stories going around here. Uh, there's uh, petroglyphs, uh, uh, rock carvings in on, on the canyon walls near Snowflake, depicting um, aliens and encounters between Native Americans and the Sky People. Well, uh, I'm looking to do uh, a um, an expedition to um, photograph some of these here in the near future. Uh, there's a there's a depiction of a, of a Native American drawing back a bow, uh, an arrow, uh, aiming at a hovering spacecraft. And you know these uh, this this petroglyph uh, is something that my uh, wife's uh, grandfather said was there as long as he knows about and there's a patina that forms on a rock carving after it's made you can tell these things are hundreds of years old so uh, i want to authenticate this as much as possible and 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 kind of dig into uh, the local um, um oral history about these petroglyphs and uh you know what people remember about those yeah the american indians get it yeah you know they get it it's it, it's been there forever oh I, look this is this is why i love my audience this question just came in i have to ask it do you watch the x files uh i've watched some i don't watch them all the time um well, you know how you know how Scully never believes somebody's story, right? Okay, Fox, you know he he's into it and and he, he he's right there. Scully's always the pragmatic one that that uh, doesn't believe anything. But if you were, uh, if you went up to Scully and Fox Mulder and you told them your story, do you think Scully would buy it? Well, uh, logically, the kind of evidence that persuades them of the reality of things that they investigate, uh, we have that kind of evidence in, in this case. So uh, I think that they should, just like, you know, people who doubt uh, me. Uh, it's frustrating to me because these are the same kind of people who would accept a much lower level of evidence uh, to justify, you know, incarcerating somebody for life or even uh, giving them the death penalty. So, uh, you know, let's, let's uh, st stand back and say, you know, let's have uh, uh, uniform standards here, you know, what's, what's good, good enough to uh, pers be persuasive and uh, conclusive evidence uh, in one circumstance certainly ought to be in other circumstances. Across the board. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, um, putting the 70s aside and the attention that that the, that your case got from the government and, and UFO research groups in the media. But since then and, and coming up to today, have you had a men in black experience? Have you been followed? Is, has there been any contact? Well, um, there's definitely uh, a reality to that phenomenon, and it's been inflicted on most of the Woods crew, and uh, strangely uh, lacking in my case. Now, I've heard uh, secondhand roundabout that there was a sort of a monitoring going on in my case, but it was very circumspect for some reason that they were trying to uh, be less intrusive on me than they were on some of the crew, you know. Um, John, he relates coming out of his house and seeing these guys, very obvious men in black kind of guys sitting in a government car sitting down the street. Um, you know, Mike found out from his neighbors that they had rented out their upstairs rooms to the 
government so they could sit there and uh, keep him under observation. And uh, um, But in your case, uh, not so much. Hands off. I'm told uh, that there's a reason for that, that they're that I'm, this sounds ridiculous, it sounds preposterous, I probably shouldn't even say it, but they say, I'm protected. By, you know, there's, there's, by nobody, them, by it E.T. Wasn't, it wasn't said, it wasn't said, but whether they mean by <laughs> aliens or government entities or what, whatever, you know, the observation and that sort of thing went up. was pretty intensive on people like like Steve. He underwent quite a bit of harassment, but um, um, that's a multi layered story. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so you and your family are hands off. That's what I'm told. But that's but, that's awesome, actually. Well, uh, a guy from military intelligence contacted me right before we went on the Larry King show. And uh, he uh, seemed to uh, would be volunteering to be uh, an independent witness, that he was in the area observing from the next hillside uh, what happened with the glow of the craft, the, the flash of the beam and all that. And uh, he was willing to come forward on that. And... Uh, he said he was on leave from military intelligence. He was deer hunting in the area at that time. And um, was, uh, you know, told by his superiors to back off and not get involved unless the men actually were charged with my murder. And, of course, since I was returned subsequently, they were let off the hook. They couldn't have murdered me. But... Um, that's kind of strange. This guy was actually given a polygraph test. Uh, and um, uh, some very strange things about, about his connections to some of the uh, disinformation people uh, uh, came out with, with the lie detector test. That's amazing. And... When you you do a lot of public speaking and you're contacted often, only you know the the private things that you're going to keep to yourself about your experience, and I understand that. Have you been contacted or had a conversation with somebody that's come up to you and told you about their experience and mentioned something that only you know? Um. Put it this way, uh, I have um, heard from people who know things that check out in terms of um, um, they know um, what has what I'm being told, you know, has to be true. Um, and so what, again, not going back to disclosure, but when that happens... And and you hear some again, you know something that only you know, and it's part of their experience. So you know that uh, their experience was just as genuine as yours. How does that affect you emotionally? Well, um, it's it's so it's actually gratifying in the same way that this uh, December sixteenth thing uh, happened. It's it's it's. Uh, um, long overdue sort of confirmation, um, uh, parallel experience, and uh, it's uh, you know, much much bigger than just me and the six. Right. Right. And, and this is the thing, Travis. When when you get that kind of uh, confirmation, it, does it indicate to you that there may be a limited amount of uh, types of ETs or races or beings that are visiting here. It may be fewer than we think or, you know, than we can imagine. The number could be in the tens of thousands. There's so many planets and stars. But if this, if the experiences are the same or maybe the type of craft or, or whatever it is, that maybe it's just a few. 
Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I think it has to do with the uh, life forms and the kinds of environments that they're uh, uh, adjusted to and uh, uh, evolved to deal with and that sort of thing. And, you know, um, debunkers, skeptics uh, were fond of uh, saying, oh, these reports of alien beings having two arms and two legs and head on top, they would never look like that. They would look like a cockroach or, or an octopus or something. Right. But uh, I, uh, I think they're being very unscientific there. Um, I think that the beings who came about in a similar uh, uh, circumstance as ours are the ones who are going to have an exceptional interest in us. And I also think that um, sentient life, intelligent beings, tool-using animals, uh, are going to have a certain um, set of characteristics in common. It would have and, to be. Yeah. And, you know, I look around uh, various life forms here on Earth, and you see uh, parallel situations uh, between different types of life forms that uh, logically uh, would ex extend beyond this planet. Uh, there are, are um, um, life forms here on the Earth that are unrelated uh they didn't one come from the other, but yet they come on a, they take on a very similar form because that's what their environment demands. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to say is like everything that comes to live in the water comes to look very fish-like, even though they didn't necessarily evolve from a fish or or come up about. You know, whether it's a bird or a mammal or a, a reptile or an amphibian. Uh, they all found uh, that the best way to get around in the water is two little flippers in the front and one big one in the back. You know, it it's what works. And so that kind of analogy holds true uh, in uh, conscious uh, animals, uh, beings, you know, from other worlds uh, that... Uh, and they breathe. They breathed oxygen, right? You yeah. guys had the same. You survived in their environment. Yeah, I think the laws of biochemistry are going to be pretty similar. I know there's going to be bizarre exceptions out there, and scientists love to conjecture about such things. But, but the truth is, uh, I'm wagering. Mark my words. Right. That when humans venture out to other life-supporting planets, that the life forms that they're going to find there are going to be disappointingly familiar. <laughs> and, and Right. So who, um, who you encountered there, the male and the female uh, uh, ET race, could they, because they were breathing, you know, a, a similar atmosphere, could they walk down the street here and not yeah, be I think noticed. they could. I, you know, I've remarked from the from the beginning that they they could pass in a crowd if they so desired, if that's what they wanted to do, is to just blend in. And they they know. could be doing it right now. They could be doing that right now. It, could they, Travis? Could they be us? Well, yeah, that's possible too. You know whether. Um, you know, there's all kinds of speculations that they seed us here long ago. Right. Uh, you know, all sorts of explanations along that line. Or are they just very, very curious that uh, there's a, a species that's uh, very, very similar to them, a similar history, similar uh, development. They can, you know answer all kinds of questions about themselves, uh, just observing us. Absolutely fascinating conversation tonight, Travis. We're not going to wait four years uh, for the next time. But are you planning another Starfire conference up there in Heater? Yeah, I would like to do that again. And uh, I've had a number of people offer to, you know, sponsor such an event. And 
Um, recently, MUFON, Phoenix MUFON, uh, uh, came up with a sort of a satellite group, that, and we, a couple of weeks ago, had a uh, local chapter, uh, Sholo MUFON, and uh, that's going to continue uh, in the future. So they'll probably uh, hold that um, in a different location because we need more space, but, uh, uh, you know, do that again in the near future. Man, I want to come hang out at that. I wanted to go to the last Starfire. Everybody talked about that and going up to the site and the way that you did that. It must have been just so much fun, and you, you do have to do another one. Are you doing any uh, speaking? Uh, what's up next? Well, I'll be speaking at the International UFO Congress, you know, the 14th through the 18th. That's down at Scottsdale at the uh, uh, casino there, mm -hmm. the Fort Dale Casino. And then um, in March uh, on the 18th, uh, I'm going to be doing the Phoenix Lights. Uh, there's a commemoration of that uh, um, coming up, and I'll be speaking at that. Uh, with uh, Lynn Katai? Yeah, Lynn Katai, and, and um, the uh, Navajo Rangers are going to be there. Um so this weekend, UFO Congress, then that kicks off in two days. That's an enormous event. We couldn't do it this year. I have to work. And we just did this other conference that we just got back today from. But uh, And then Phoenix Lights with uh, Lynn Katai. And anything that you need here, let us know. And we'll get it out there for you, Travis. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. It's great talking with you. And we'll get you a spare Fade to Black uh, T-shirt so you can wear and wash the other one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Travis, you're the best, man. Thank you so much. Be safe out there and tell everybody out at uh, the Congress that we said hello. Thank you so much. Okay. Great interview. Great great show. Yeah, thank you, Travis. Travis Walton, everybody. His uh, website, he's got uh, uh, TravisWalton.com. It's right there. You can go and visit that. We have links up at uh, Jimmy Church Radio. And I'm going to take a quick break and come back. And uh, take some phone calls and have a little bit of fun. This is Fade to Black. Again, thank you to Travis Walton. This weekend at the International UFO Congress in Scottsdale, Arizona. And with that, I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. I'll be right back. Listen to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. So you went to dinner last night, you had your favorite pasta. Ugh. Or maybe you had a heavy, spicy meal and it left you. Ugh. Get the tea.com. Maybe you mowed down a huge steak and your plumbing is all plugged. Ugh. Get the tea.com. Our super strength tea will take care of your occasional. Ugh. It's all organic and non-GMO. Get rid of... Ugh. We have so many great supplements, but our super tea is number one. GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. So, you love talk radio. Then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fate to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark. 
deep with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. Hey, can we talk about something serious for a minute? Your age. Getting old has its perks. But remember, being a few years younger... You know, your hair was thicker, you didn't have so many wrinkles, that extra weight wasn't haunting you, and you just felt better. Well, we can't turn back the clocks and go back 10 or 15 years, but you can start feeling and looking 10 or 15 years younger with Nature's Youth RSF. It's a doctor-formulated daily supplement that helps your body maintain its peak performance and fight the aging process. Imagine sleeping better, looking better, and feeling better. See how Nature's Youth RSF has helped thousands of people just like you at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. The holidays are coming. Imagine how it will feel when your family and friends are asking you what you did to look so good. Your secret will be Nature's Youth RSF. It's time to start looking better and feeling better. Learn more in order your Nature's Youth RSF at naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What a great conversation that was with uh, Travis Walton. I can't believe it's been four years. But it hasn't officially. It's, well, it's since we've done a full show. But he's been on with us uh, every time we've uh, been at uh, Contact. And Roswell, he was on with us. So anytime we've done a remote. So he's been on every year. But not we haven't had that <clears throat> full conversation uh, pretty enlightening too. Pretty amazing, uh, pretty amazing conversation. And with that, I've opened up the phone lines three two three eight two five five zero four five or three two three two seven five nine six nine five. And uh, got calls already coming in. Let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hello, Mirella. Yes, you're it's live. Me- oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Who is I it? I can't believe. Who is this? Thank you. Mirella. Mirella. Mirella from Sydney, how Australia. Are, how are you? I'm good. I'm very good. I love that interview. In fact, I love a, so much of what you do and so much confirmation in different with different people. And um, I was right with you on, you know, December and that whole thing and I had to make a page on my Facebook because I have so many nice things that that you actually broadcast and I put them on on a page, not on my Facebook, where I talk to my daughter in LA and she lives there with with my three grandchildren. But today was nice because I have a little affinity with this owl thing. Right, right. Was that a trip or what? I know. (laughs) No, really. It was. Um, I was in Germany for a few years, and I had uh, there was a big owl that lived in the forest there. Where I actually had a, had this uh, a, an experience of sighting, but I won't talk about that now. But it was just so nice to hear that. But there's been many little things that you've been able to um, get people to disclose just with your really sensitive interviewing and I'm just like I talk about you here all the time in my little community Maroubra Beach which one interview you did um, David Wilcox um, alluded to Botany Bay yes, this area which is where I, where I live but I didn't I didn't get what he said and I haven't been able to find it again but you know ever since I've been able to you know, get get with you on radio because it's a bit hard here, didn't he? Because I, 
oh, I'm nervous, but it was hard to get the code for the phone number. And oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jimmy. And thank you to your family. Thank you to, you know, just the whole, the whole production. I want, I, I was saying to Alicia, I talk to her every day. She married a Marine, but they got divorced. Lots of different things. My brother had a, has had an interview in the newspaper. He had a sighting me up the up, up up the river and he was panning for gold. That was pretty major. But it was the same time I I got a hold of Adam, my brother, who's a bit of spit we don't see each other that anyway, connected with my brother since I've been listening to Fake to Black. Hello, played Fake to Black. I just <laughs> love that you. That is amazing. And can I share yeah. you an Australia story that happened this weekend? It yeah, was it was please. so cool. Okay, so uh, what I like to do is um, when I start off, when I'm hosting at conferences, I'll ask the audience, okay, who thinks they traveled the farthest to get here, (laughs) right? And so, you know, the hands will fly up and we get these different, and so this, this past Friday... Um, we get, we had somebody from Sweden. I said, okay, that's pretty good. They think, right. They thought that they got the t-shirt. Now the guy raises his hand and I'm, you know, from Austria and I'm like, Ooh, that's kind of a tie. Right. And, uh, I said, who else? This guy raised Australia, mate. And I said, really? Yeah. And I said, okay, absolutely. There, there's our winner. I mean, how do you go farther than Australia? What Antarctica, you know, what's farther? So he runs down and uh, grabs the shirt after, uh, and that was great, right? So he steps up, and I made him say "shrimp on the Barbie," and I embarrass him, and you know, front, and, and, you know, he gets his applause, and he, and he, and he spl- So after um, uh, later on that night, he comes up, and he's probably listening now. Maybe he'll listen later if he's maybe he's traveling. But then his name was Jack. So Jack comes up. He's wearing his fade to black shirt. Jack comes up. And uh, it says, dude, man, I love fade to black. I'm a fade or not. I am fully engaged. Australia <laughs> loves you. So it just so happens that he was from Australia. He won the T-shirt. But what made mm. it all the more special was, man, Australia loves you, mate. We we yeah. all love fade to black, and I'm a love fade you. or not. Yeah, it was so cool. So there you go. You. Yeah, we love yeah. Australia right back. Thank you so much. Yeah, and um, thank you very much, and always with you. Thank are you, you. Are you on Twitter? Um, not really. I'm. Oh, uh, so you need to come I'm hang 55, out. I'm fifty-five, right? I'm fifty-five. I said to my granddaughter, she's ten. Oh, I don't know how to use Instagram. I don't know how to use Twitter. And she goes, Oh, grab no, no. <laughs> like I, I said, okay, just thank God that you come through on the Facebook because that's what I know. <laughs> that's all I know. And and YouTube, you know, everything you put on YouTube, I fall asleep too. I do the I, same I thing. I put it on to fall asleep. That's I have fine. sleeping problems because I'm fine. always awake at, at 3, 2 and 3 in the morning, like stargazing, whatever. Right. And um, um, and I've got a love affair with Aquaman. They developed like a, a, a cartoon character for me. I worked for Walt Disney for 12 years. Right. So as an animator. So, you know, when Aquaman came on the set, I swim every day, surf every day, dive, you know, when, when it's calm. It's beautiful here at Maribor Beach, near Bondi, five minutes from Bondi. It's so like a two-hour hike, walk along the coast to Bondi Beach. So I used to live there. But anyway, thank you. Thank we you. love you. Uh, we need you. Right back at you. And your name was Morella? Mirella, yeah. Thank you so much. Great phone call. Thank you, darling. Absolutely. Beautiful. Right back at you. Thank you Beautiful. so much. Beautiful fight to black. Love yeah. you. Yeah, love you back. That's a great phone call right there. And this Australia thing that's going down between fade to black and 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 Australia, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. You know, Canada, the UK, New Zealand. Uh, Rita will tell you uh, we um, we were getting on the elevator at uh, Conscious Life Expo, and, and we get on the elevator, and there's you know a gentleman. He's alone, and he takes one look at me, and uh, he goes, you know, Jimmy, Rita, it's good to meet you, man. New Zealand loves you. And I was like, what? Oh man, 
you have no idea. I was like, oh, we do. And and thank you for that. Yeah, it, it's it's unbelievable to go through all of that. All right, three two three eight two five five zero four five or three two three two seven five nine six nine five. And uh, going back uh, to to Travis, I wanted to make this this comment. He's very protective of of his kids and his family, and and I understand that. But also, um, one day, uh, Travis and I, I think we were having a, a breakfast or, or lunch or something, and we were sitting there, and we're trading pictures of our kids, and we're talking about what's going on. And he took me through everybody, right, and and what they were doing. And it was just so cool. So I knew that that was a zone I really didn't uh, want to go into or that he wouldn't want to touch on the show. But there are certain things that need to be discussed about that, and, and we have to ask. And that's what brought up that owl statement. And and I'm glad that he mentioned that. So And, and to all of you out there, have you encountered the owl aspect in your lives. And and then he said, it's the eyes. And I want, wow. Think about that for a second. That was pretty amazing. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on fade to black. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. It's Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? What a show, right? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, what did you think? Hello. Um, that's actually the first or second time I had listened to Travis. The first time, um, I listened to him before, like that first time you um, brought him on the show. It was way before I started listening to Fade of Black. Right. But I listened to him because um, I was going to go to the, I was going to the Ozark Mountain UFO conference last year, and I didn't really know who he was, so I wanted to find out a little bit about him. So after listening to that to that first show of yours, I saw his movie, and I was like, "Wow!" I was like, "This is great." <laughs> so he's yeah. amazing. Um, he's so honest. Yeah. Yeah, and he's a, he's a, he seems like a really nice person, a really good person. Um, you know, they, I'm going to be yeah. honest with you, Marilyn. Um, on shows like this, on any show, um, I think that uh, he he it's a, it, it it affects him emotionally. I'm going to tell you straight yeah. up. When you are around him one on one and 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 he accepts you for that, he is one of the funniest guys. He's got jokes. He's he just loves to talk and just life and in general and um I remember one day um he went out and got Mexican food. Oh, are you there? Mm-hmm. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm there. I'm here. Oh, okay. He went out and, and, and so anyway, he goes, and we're standing there talking, and I was eating, he's eating, and he bites into this burrito, and he's like, man, this is the most amazing burrito ever. And he hands it to me. Mm-hmm. You got to take a bite <laughs> of this. I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't do, no. So I, I took a bite of his burrito, and it was good. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah. but that's who he is. You know, he's just mm-hmm. as normal and as funny and as cool as anybody else uh, that you can think of. And and so I try to get him in that comfort zone here, you know, back to, right. you, know, you know, out to the, the guy that, that I know the audience would just love to hang out with. So, and he plays a mean guitar yeah. too. Yeah. Um, I was calling in too, because um, it just his story kind of reminded me of something my grandpa told me. Um, He said when he was young and, you know, he lived in Mexico. um, Well, usually they, they believe in witches down there. They believe witches are real. Mm -hmm. And I told my ass this years ago and told him, grandpa, have you ever seen any witches? He's like, I don't know. He's like, but I remember one night I saw three, three uh, lights in the sky just moving around. That's it. And then now I kind of think back on that. I'm like, I don't think that was witches. Like, 
You know, right. who knows what it could have been. Right. If I asked him now, he probably wouldn't really comprehend that kind of stuff. I'm not trying to talk down on him, but he just didn't really um, have that level of education do because he was in poor, poor living and all that stuff. But yeah. Yep. You're right about that, Marilyn. That. And, and, and thank you for the phone call. Be yep. safe. Be well. Do all of that stuff. Thank you, Marilyn. Okay. Thank you. Great phone call. Um, Travis, also, and she just reminded me, Travis wanted to hear from anybody out there back in uh, February uh, 12th, I think he said it was, uh, uh, in 2014. He was here in Burbank speaking at UPARS with uh, Steve Murillo and uh, and on his way back to uh, Arizona uh, to take, prop, you know, he's on the five freeway heading north up into the mountain, into the grapevine. He saw a, 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 a huge black triangle. There were other witnesses uh, and other reports of this sighting, but he wants to hear from you. So if, if February 2014, February 12th, uh, or 13th, 2014, which was a Tuesday, by the way. If you saw anything, contact us. Let us know. I'll pass everything on to Travis for you. All right, let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? You're live. Jimmy? Yes. Ah, awesome. Hey, uh, this is Jeremy. I'm calling you. I'm actually calling you from Burbank right now. Oh, that's weird. Well, no, not weird. <laughs> There's other people in Burbank. How are you, man? I'm good. Thank you. Hey, I just called uh, with a request. What's that? And the, the request is this. Um, in 2004, approximately around there, Coast to Coast had a, a 9-11 roundtable. It was the first time that a group of people was gathered together to talk about the alternative happenings of around 9-11. The theories, uh, 9-11, I, I think that was actually the day that 9-11 Truth was born because there was uh, so many different theories that were hosted. Um, what I'm calling you about is I think that you're the perfect host and vehicle to host a uh, Las Vegas uh, Route 91 October 10 one, uh, round table. Wow. And, and, uh, and I think that that, I think it, it would be wonderful radio. I actually hit, I tried to make the request to another alt radio host and, you know, didn't really get that much interest. And, you know, I'm just kind of like, I, I really think it would be, uh, spectacular to do it. You know, I mean, if anything, it's not, I, I don't know what people would learn, but it would be incredibly entertaining, you know? Well, yes, and somebody would learn something from it. I mean, you you know probably as much as anybody that I was and still am uh, pretty outspoken about that because of the silence from the authorities. You know, we're not getting any real answers out of them, and it's it and and the media shut it down too uh, for something that big to have happened, and then to have the media just go away on it, and it just felt weird to me. It's we're not getting the full story no matter what. And we learned our lessons oh. from 9-11. I, I'm talking about the audience, right? It, we we now know what to look for and, and, and answers and, and to ask the right questions. 9-11 shocked us, and we, we got complacent too quick. Like you said, it took to 2004 to put together the roundtable. This time around, we're asking those questions. Yeah, and we're, we're asking those questions, and there's quite a few people that have taken it upon themselves, if you want to call them, you know, uh, new media startups as far as journalists, that have really just spent an enormous amount of time, maybe too much time, um, and, and consumed with this. And so they have so much, uh, you know, information that they've gathered. There's theories. I'm thinking of two people in particular, but I know there's more. I'm thinking of IntelliHub which is Shepard Ambellis. Mm -hmm. He's out of Austin. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of uh, a lady who's huge on the web with a political presence. And her, she goes by the, the name, the same progressive. Her name is Debbie Lusignan, but she 
got into Vegas and got in super deep. And they come from two totally different sides of the spectrum. So it would be very interesting to have, like, perspectives like that on the show and, you know, to see where people are coming from. And there's others, too. I know, you know, Laura Loomer was on the ground and stuff like that there. But um, definitely, I think that, uh, you know, and your abilities to to moderate and keep people in check, but yet let everybody have something to say, man, it would be great. And even what if it's on fade to black, if you take it to coast, whatever right. the point is, is just somebody do it. Would you do me a favor? Oh, what's your name again? I'm sorry. My name. My name is Jeremy. I oh, actually Jeremy. sent you a tweet today. I think. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, I'm sure you did, but uh, let me just say that. Shoot me an email. Just shoot okay. me an email and and copy read on it and refer back to this and and give me your your short list of, of who you think. And, and I think that's a good show. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to be whoever that alt radio host was. Um, I think, I think, (laughs) I I think I agree with you. I think that's a good show. So why don't you send me an email, remind me so we can follow up fair. Okay. All right. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. Done deal. Jeremy from Burbank, right down the street. You're not looking for the bunker. Are you? Have you tried to no, find man, it? No, okay. man. I'll tell you where I'm at. I'm, I'm like near uh, Victory and Burbank Boulevard right now. I'm working. Okay. We're, we're two blocks from you. Look out. Okay. There's a parking yeah. lot um, up next to the uh, parking structure, up next to the, uh, to the mall. We're okay. Un- we're underneath that. So th- now um, are you tripping out? You yeah, should. I'm really I'll, tripping out. All right, Jeremy. Have a great night, man. All right, you too. We'll talk okay, to you. I'll talk to you. And don't forget to send me that email, Jeremy. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hey, how's it going, Jimmy? It's going good. Who's this? Uh, this is RJ calling from San Francisco. RJ from San Francisco. How are you, man? Yes, sir. Doing fantastic. Having a great night so far. I was just... Uh, listening to the show tonight and uh i've been listening um just recently um more or less a new listener so everything's been great so far the show's been fantastic thank you for that what'd you think of travis tonight pretty pretty amazing oh yeah no it was it was so awesome you know all the different you know topics he was bringing up but the thing that i uh called about that i thought it was interesting was you know bringing up the whole owl thing again so right. i actually <laughs> Yeah, I knew I knew everybody was, was going to respond to that. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. So, well, no, I thought it was really interesting. And uh, it brought back an experience that I had where I actually live in the Presidio in San Francisco. It's the old military base. And, you know, it's kind of a natural area. So I was coming back from the gym one night. And it was kind of dusk. And, uh, you know, I saw this owl in the tree and it was like, you know, right on the side of the trail about six feet above me and then um, stood there looking at it for a little while and then turned around and there was another one, you know, right in the tree next to me that had swoop in and I didn't hear it. And it was just kind of a crazy experience. So then heard this story and then, you know, got me thinking. I know, right? (laughs) You know, I'm going to tell you something, you know, (laughs) I'm going to tell you something funny uh, before we have to wrap the show, but trip, uh, trip on this. So you live at the Presidio. All right. Yes, I do. Uh, my dad was stationed there. Okay. No way. Uh, now, okay. Uh, now, the main road that runs along the bottom of the Presidio next to the bay, right? Mm-hmm. His mm-hmm. house was like the third house in from the bridge, and the back of his house looked up underneath the Golden Gate. I mean, it was like right there. Boom. Oh, yeah. I know exactly where you're talking yeah, I know about. You I, I ride there yeah. on the way to the gym every day. Man, I looked at I looked at his house, right? Uh, I didn't live there uh-huh. with him. He's he, I, I I was I was older, you know, I'd already moved out of the house by that point. But so I'm there and uh and I'm looking, I'm like, dude, you know what somebody would pay for this, right? I mean, Oh you know, my god, yeah. I, I know it's, it's crazy. And it's government housing for him, right? And and well, yeah. the view of you know, and now it's it's all private now, right? They closed it down. 
Wally say it. So it turned into the military base in or the early nineties and, or excuse me, from the military base, but now it's still federal. So I actually pay my rent to the federal government and it's crazy. One of the houses down the street from me was going for around like eight thousand, nine thousand dollars a month. And this is like a three bedroom, one of the brick houses. It's right. Right. Crazy. Right. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's insane. But yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic living out here. I felt like if you blindfolded somebody and dropped them out here, they wouldn't know they were in San Francisco. So I'm from Oregon. And so I love it. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what he had a three bedroom, one of the red brick. It was definitely red brick and three bedroom. Um, and just when we were talking about the same thing, but anyway, just, I, I turned around and I just looked at the bay, you know, looking across, uh, going north. I'm just thinking this would be insane if it was private, you know, oh, I know. it's just crazy. All right, man. Uh, RJ, thank you for the phone call and the whole owl yes, thing. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, the whole owl thing. Oh, yeah. now, now that Travis has brought it up, you know, everybody's going to listen to that. I'll get the emails. We'll get the phone calls, <laughs> but that's the yeah. part of awareness, right? Most people would never make that connection. And that's, oh, yeah. There's all these sort of synchronicities out there. You just got to find them each day, you know? Absolutely. Hey, RJ, thank you for the phone call, my friend. Great phone call. Yeah, thank you so much for the show. Hope you have a fantastic evening. Yeah, you too, man. Don't be a stranger. All right. Definitely not. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. RJ from San Francisco right there. And, uh, yeah, the whole owl thing uh, for when I say owl thing, this has been uh, spoken about. I was just uh, reminded of uh, uh, Clendon's book about this, too, as well, um, and where he referenced it. But every time we bring up owls, I get the emails. I get the phone calls. I haven't had the owl experience. I haven't had it myself. But Travis brought it up. So there you go. All right. Uh, wrapping up uh, 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 our first night back after Conscious Life Expo. And uh, tomorrow night, okay, now, tomorrow night we're going to do a, a special tribute uh, for John Anthony West. I want to remind everybody what's going on. We're going to have Dr. Robert Schock here, um, who was, uh, you know, instrumental with, with everything, uh, with the Sphinx and the dating and all of uh, those revelations that changed the world on Egyptian history with John Anthony West going back to 1991. So he is going to be here tomorrow night. He, uh, he asked to do this, so we're going to do this. And uh, he will be on with us for the first hour. And then Chance Gardner, who directed Magical Egypt 1 and 2 with John Anthony West, He's going to be with us for the second hour. We're going to take phone calls. We're going to tell some stories. We're going to have some fun. And maybe I'll knock back uh, some chilled vodka. John Anthony West, uh, drink of choice, that and scotch. Um, and we just, uh, at the Conscious Life Expo, uh, did uh, a tribute uh, to Jim Mars and John Anthony West there. And the reaction from everybody, they didn't expect it. Um, and there was, this was the... Something that surprised me uh, when I had announced that, you know, John Anthony West had passed away a couple of days prior, uh, many didn't know. And they got the news there at uh, the Conscious Life Expo. And and uh, the, the tribute that we did there, we did the best that we could uh, for the moment. But we also, and this includes tomorrow night, I just want to let everybody know. I'm not here to be sad. I'm not. And I didn't want to bum everybody out Friday night. And we didn't. Everybody just at that moment was just uh, at at one with themselves. And so we're not here to, to pay tribute and bum everybody out. We're here to have some fun tomorrow night. And we're going to do that with Robert Schock and Chance Gardner. So uh, come on in and hang out with us tomorrow night. It's going to be great. And uh, there you go. This is another fade to black in the can. I want to thank the one and only Travis Walton. Great conversation tonight. I learned some things that I didn't know. Travis is the best. There you go. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Camarion. Show is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Patel, and Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew, the Geek Music. 
Doug Aldrich, intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This broadcast zone and copyrighted 2018 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow night, our John Anthony West tribute. But until then, follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Everybody be safe. Go back, Lee Tevy.